It's time for the ninth annual Dan Fitzgerald Memorial Basketball Showcase, otherwise known as the Fitz. That's the outside of Ferris High School. We've moved a little south. This tournament's always been at Lewis and Clark High School, but now in the ninth year, we're up the hill at Ferris. And tonight we have from San Francisco, where Dan Fitzgerald went to high school, St. Ignatius, the Wildcats here, boys and girls. First up, we have the girls game between SI and the Titans of University High School. Hi, I'm Bud Namick, joined by Greg Hannon. We're excited to be with you for the Fitz. You've been doing this a long time, Greg. I have. This is a uh, sixth or seventh year for me, and it's always a fun time. It's a wonderful event, the ninth year that we've had the Fitz now, and we've been able to see it grow, and we're excited with an association with Hoop Fest now, which has really helped uh, this tournament gain some excitement. We had our biggest banquet ever last night at Northern Quest. The teams have been busy today, shoot-arounds at the warehouse, and also the boys' teams performing community service at Union Gospel Mission and the girls at Ronald McDonald House. Yes, and there's some great basketball as well on top of that. So it kind of... It, it encompasses everything it's fantastic there's some great uh you know future uh division one and two basketball players that we'll see tonight and uh and hopefully some good games as well. Well, the first game was an outstanding one, the girls' game between Beaverton and Central Valley. It was close all the way, a one-point game at the end of three quarters. Beaverton had a little spurt to start the fourth quarter, and they ended up winning at 62-54. Now, Greg, just to give you an idea how competitive the girls' side of this tournament has been, Beaverton last year went 0-2 in their debut in the fifth. They went on, ended up losing in the 6A semifinals in Oregon. Right. Yeah, and that's the kind of basketball I think you'll see out here uh, and in the GSL and around the Northwest. So it, I think it'll be fun. It's always a fun tournament. We have great uh, guests on and uh, and some great basketball. Mount Spokane just made a nice statement for the GSL with a resounding 82-58 win over West Valley of Yakima. Tyson Degenhart, just a junior, he's already verbal the Boise State, but he was impressive. 31 points, that's the third highest scoring game in Fitz history. Yes, uh, and I watched uh, half of that game, and he looked very, very good out there. Very strong and very confident, and, and he's got a whole other year. St. Ignatius and University Girls up next in the Fitz. You're watching the Fitz live from Ferris High School on SWX. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. We can make an effort to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand compassion and love. What a beautiful day to visit Cheney for our Teacher of the Month Award. We're here at Betts Elementary School where a very deserving Tracy Trotter was honored. Put your hands together for our Teacher of the Month, Ms. Trotter. You guys are why I'm here. I love coming to my job every day, so thank you. <laughs> Miss Trotter was nominated by fourth grader A.B. Pringle, who says she is simply the best. She was kind and always there for everybody in her class, and she never gave up. If you want to write a note, just ask your parents about it, and they will tell you how to. Brought to you by STCU. Here for good. High School Basketball on SWX, sponsored by your local Kubota dealers, Coeur d'Alene Tractor, Adams Tractor, and Boundary Tractor. Proud to support our local athletes. Ferris High School, the host school for the ninth annual Dan Fitzgerald Memorial Basketball Tournament. We're just about ready for the introduction of the starting lineups. The University High School Titans out of Spokane Valley in your white uniforms on the right of your screen. And 
St. Ignatius Wildcats. They are 1-0 oh out of San Francisco. Mike Mulcairns is the head coach. He's in his 13th year as the head coach. 21 years on the staff. Impressive record, 251 wins so far. Yeah, that's good. Your starting lineup is brought to you by Giza Credit Union in your new home for home loans. Yeah, he's coached 362 games. That's a lot of games. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. It is. Went to school at SI and then was uh, on the staff. His brother's the athletic director. So it's a, it's it's a family, family affair. Yes, it that is. is. for sure. That's good. There's a look at, at Mike right there. He better win. <laughs> or he'll have to deal with his brother. Yeah, that's never a good thing, is it? First visit for SI to this tournament. Uh, they're very excited. And they come out of a, a, a very competitive league, the WCAL West Catholic Athletic League. Mitty has been here out of that league. Yep. Uh, Sarah High School, which has produced the likes of Tom Brady, Lynn Swan, right. Barry Bonds. It's, it's pretty impressive, some of the, the folks who have made their way out of the WCAL. Dan Fouts, outstanding quarterback for Oregon and then the NFL. And, and Hall an of Famer. Yeah. yeah, an announcer now. He's yeah. a graduate of SI. Is he? You, you're pumping me full of information tonight. That's great. It's going to be a fun <laughs> one. going to be a fun one. All right, something you should know. Brought to you by State Farm. Dave Christie and his team. Make it simple to bring together what matters to you. This is the ninth straight year that the Pitts Tournament has happened. Of course, first time at Ferris, then at LC. Over that time, the tournament's featured 25 different boys and 16 different girls teams from five different states. And the Geese's starting lineups, Ellie Boni, a 5'10 senior for University. Angie McAdams, a 5'8 senior, who's on a bench in All-City for the Wildcats. Rachel Harvey's a 5'6 senior. She is going to head to Cal State Northridge. Caroline Edwards, a 5'11 senior for the University Titans. Jackie Acosta, a 5'8 sophomore for SI. One of the players who will have the ball in her hands quite a bit. And for U High. A couple of twins who are outstanding. Tyler McClement Call won the three-point shooting contest last night at Northern Quest of the Banquet. 5'11", senior. She is headed to Portland State as is her twin sister. Yes. Yeah, they're very good. They can both shoot it. That'll be fun to watch tonight and this season as the season goes on. Claire Rutteland is a 5'11", sophomore. Mike McCarran told me he's hoping she'll play basketball all four years. She's a Division I volleyball prospect, so might end up focusing on volleyball. There's the other twin, Jackson McClendon Call. She's a 5'9", senior, two inches shorter than her sister. And the post player for SI is Sunja Elzi, a 5'11", sophomore, wears number 34. And the final starter for the Titans, number 32, Allie Mills, a 5'11", junior. Jay Kennedy's in his fourth year as the head coach of the Titans, a record of 34 and 18. There's a good look at Jay, Ray Schill, Lori Van Dies are the assistant coaches. This is the third appearance for U High, the first, though, under Jay Kennedy. Yeah, Jay does a nice job, so uh, it'll be fun to see how these two match up here tonight. And it's always uh, interesting when you get a team from out of the area. You know, we play in the GSL here locally, uh, a lot of the kids, and, you know, they, they get a tendency to know one another. They see them all summer at the warehouse or in the winter, and then they see them throughout the season. And it's always fun to get a new uh, new matchup and new lineups out here. But I think it'll be interesting to see to start how do they do uh, to get going. So <laughs> We're looking for a girls' ball. A little smaller than the guys, both, so you got to make sure you get the right one. You, know, you talked about familiarity. Rachel Harvey, number four, you see her back to us right now, will be guarding at times Ellie Boni for U High. And those two know each other from the Adidas camp. They've competed and played together at the Adidas summer camp. Yeah, there are certainly a few of them that will, yeah. And in today's world, they travel everywhere, and, and they may have crossed paths for sure, like those two. U High with the basketball first, trying to get settled in, and... Uh, had a problem with the clock, apparently. Yeah, I think the shot clock didn't start with the game clock. Those little things happen early on. Yeah, well, Damon, uh, the official there, he does a good job. He's the one that got us the right size ball. And, yes. And uh, is making sure that the, the MVP he, so far. Yeah, his shot clock's working. Ball gets inside. That's Boni trying to take it inside and is kicked away. It'll be Titan ball with 17 on the shot clock. Yeah, and speaking of which, knowing people, you know, Damon, the official, he has refed around the area. He's from Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene, and he's ref for years. So a uh, little familiarity for some of the players, at least, as well as the officials. 
No opportunity to get the first basket of the game as Tyler McClement call can't get it to go and the Wildcats bring it back the other way. Our first look at them on offense. Rachel Harvey. This is Claire Untelin. Now Jackie Acosta. Good ball movement. Offensive rebound and an opportunity to go to the free throw line now for Sunja Elzey. So it was a good job of running the weave there by the Wildcats, and they did break down the defense, but it was a good job of stepping in by Uhai and forcing a poor shot, but they just didn't rebound the, the missed shot, and uh, St. Ignatius got it and picked up the foul. That's actually, there's been a number change. Diary Kin was wearing 34, but she's injured, so they flipped, uh, they brought a gal up and put her into Sunja's number, so Sunja Elzey is wearing number 34, and she's the gal who's at the free throw line. And the next one up, and didn't get the kind bounce. No. Pretty good touch, just not quite good enough. Both these clubs will opportunity run, try to get the, the quick bucket if they can. Yep, that's a good call uh, by them. It's a good early offense right there where they really run it up fast up the, up the floor. Elsie just picked up the reach foul, her first, and the first team foul on SI. How many possessions do you think it takes for the girls to kind of get acclimated to, to what's going on? Uh, you know, based on you, Hyde, not much. They look very crisp to start with, I think, out here. They, run, they ran a little flex cut right there, didn't get it, but boy, they had a good look at it right in the paint. The Clement call tried for the steal and eventually does create the turnover as SI loses the handle and the Titans will see if they can get on the scoreboard. Yeah, just seems to start with a little more aggressiveness by Uhai, a little more confidence in their play to start here would be my early observation. Ellie Bonai with the ball. She's headed to Colorado State. Nice drive, going to get to the rack and <laughs> Sunja says no way. Yeah, no way is right. It was a very aggressive move, but... It was swatted. Long pass down, and the Wildcats turn it over again. Yeah, a little unfortunate break there uh, for the Wildcats. The official got in the way and couldn't recover that pass. Mike McCarron's not happy with that. No, I think you're correct there. His team had a chance to, to play a game. They're 1-0. They defeated Doherty Valley, which is a pretty highly respected team, and they took care of like 75-29. to 29. Yes, well, another great inside move by... Uh, Tyler McClimmick call there and just a good post up but a good square up and shot. Harvey bringing it back the other way for the Wildcats. Nice entry pass. LZ will be going back to the free throw line. Yes, and LZ did a good job of just waiting for that pass to see how that play developed and be ready to receive it. And she did get the dish and then uh, took the shot. Made one or two a minute ago. This one up and good. Yeah, she has a very nice touch on the shot. Just a sophomore. Each team with senior leadership, but relying on some younger players as well. Second time she gets one of two, but she also gets the offensive carom. And almost an assist. Ball just not going down for the Wildcats right now. And they're able to retain it. She was stepping on the baseline, though. No, but they're doing a much better job of crashing the boards than New High was. Uhai was fortunate there to come away with that basketball. A little one-two-two press early on by the Wildcats. Yes, it is. All right, coach, tell me if this is a uh, just a used time press or if they're going to be aggressive. With no, it looks turnovers. like they're going to be very aggressive here. They tried to trap there on the on the wing and uh, and they cut across there and got that uh, turnover. Little scrum and they come away with the basketball on that turnover. There's Harvey on the pull up, no good. One and done for SI that time, and here come the Titans. Titans expected to be in the mix of things in the GSL. Thanks to that young lady who knocked down a lot of those shots last night at the banquet in the three-point shooting yeah, contest. Yeah, that's what you were saying. I didn't get in out, and out that. on that one. Yeah, my son had a game, so I wanted to stay home and watch that last night. There's a nice pass. That was. The conversion by Claire Untelin for the bucket for yeah. SI. And Claire, you know, she's long, as you can tell, and they've got her out here on the point on defense that makes it difficult to make those cross-court passes. Boy, a lot of contact. Nice little give and go. Yeah, I think I thought there was a foul there, but Jay Kennedy is uh, agreeing with you. Yes, I think so. You know, one thing that happens in the fits, the officials work back-to-back -back games. So this is the first game for this crew. They'll also work the SI against Ferris Boys game afterwards right. because this is an early Friday night. Almost every high school in the area is playing, and there aren't enough officials to go around as Bonai connects. Yes. Yeah, and that makes sense. 
Tied at four. Halfway through opening quarter of this third game of the Fitz. Acosta cut off. Ten left on the shot clock. Harvey. Can't get it to go as that ball goes out of bounds. Well, it was a good job of following her own shot there. She almost picked up that rebound. Perhaps you can see as you're watching for Rachel Harvey on the shoulder you can't see. Some folks would say, does she have a tattoo there? But that's the new rage, cupping. Yes, You've got the injury, and right. it leaves that red circular. It does, yeah. I noticed that earlier when she was warming up. I know my sons do that. McClement call unable to connect on that one, and it sails out of bounds, and SI will have the basketball. Sabrina Ma, 5'8", sophomore, checking in for the first time. Mike McCarron said he'll play 10 players in the opening quarter. Well, they're running them through here. Both teams are, and neither one of them, though, have been torching the nets. No. A lot of attempts. Uh, just maybe need to settle in here a little bit. We've been playing pretty aggressive defense on both ends, but I think we just need to settle down both offensively and get some little bit better looks. Alyssa Osborne, a 5'6 freshman, number 11 in the lineup for the Titans. Harvey, who has the ball in her hands a bunch, gives it off now. There's the jumper put up by McAdams, won't go. And rebound foul going to be called. A couple of Titans crash into the court. 3.52 left in the opening quarter. We're tied at four between St. Ignatius and University. You're watching The Fits on SWX. If you were thinking about going to Gonzaga Prep, I would want you to know that the teachers aren't here to just teach the subjects. They're here because they truly appreciate each kid. They know your name. They want to help you succeed not only in the classroom, but mind, body, and spirit. And it helps to bring us closer to others and to God at the same time. You just can't get that anywhere else. The school makes an effort to build a community that lasts for a long time. I found my place at Gonzaga Prep. Find your place by visiting gprep.com. State Farm Agent Dave Christie is here to help protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Dave Christie and his team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. Basketball coverage on SWX, sponsored in part by Mechanics Pride. Full service auto repair with three Spokane locations to serve you downtown, Valley, and South. But David, along with Greg Hannon, 4 4, our score early on between St. Ignatius and the University. Both clubs struggling to get the ball in the basket right now. Yeah, a little bit. I think they'll get going as they warm up. Uh, Back in the 1-2-2 press here that we were talking about, and I do think it's a fairly, they want to be fairly aggressive here. They're looking to trap if they can do it. And then back into a man. Sometimes Say, that's a little just, tough transition for it is. players. It is, yep. It is very tough. I know when, a lot of times when I play, we'd go back to a 2-3 zone and then match out of that. Wildcats with a good overplay, and the Titans turn it over. Shot put up by Sabrina Mon. She is going to head to the free throw line. It, you know, and it, it really depends on the personnel that you have out there defensively and, and offensively who you can match up with. If they're fairly e even size, it's easy to just pick someone up, you know. But if there's big height differences, then sometimes you match and you get some of those mismatches. Eliana Ramirez, a freshman, called for the foul for the Titans. And Moth free throw line, unable to connect. She'll try number two. Molly Ennis checks in, 5'7", sophomore. Her older sister was the All-City Player of the Year a year ago. She's now at ULP. That's a nice accolade to have. <laughs> but if you're the younger sister, tough act to follow. Yes, or Sabrina right. can't connect. So we're still still tied at four. Bone eye with it for the Titans. McClement called. Nice look down low. Deflected out of bounds. Good recovery by the defense. It was. Absolutely. Good job getting the hand on that thing. Katie Christensen into the lineup. And Allie Mills in, returning for the Titans. Ramirez, a high arcing three, offensive rebound. Christensen fouled as she brought it down. Christensen, a 5'11 sophomore. Foul was whistled on Rachel Harvey. That's her first. There are two team fouls on the Wildcats. 
Always fun to, you know, after coaching and playing, it's always fun to what, what kind of, uh, you know, sets do people run out of sideline out of bounds or baseline out of bounds and see how successful or not that they are. Going to weave outside, yeah, 15 to on the too. shot clock. Ramirez can't get the roll out of bounds. They'll say to the Titans. Yeah, and I thought Allie Mills might have got away with a little couple steps there. Are they going to overturn it and give the ball to the Wildcats? Oh, there you go. Rachel Harvey ready to get the Wildcats into their offense. She's going to take it all the way to the rim. Nice defense by Bonai. Very good. So, I had some numbers here, but yeah. just mishandled Too quick it. on the pass. Yes. 2.40 left, opening quarter. We're tied at four. You know, and that's part of the thing, I think, but is when you're in a controlled environment and practice a lot of times, it's hard to simulate some of the chaos that goes on and what you should really do, uh, you know, in certain situations. And this is, we're kind of seeing some of that out here. It's just not quite as crisp in these, you know, first few minutes. And you've got a couple of veterans in McAdams and Harvey, certainly for, for SI, but a lot of younger players who have had to change their role. And the same situation uh, at U High with with Bonai and the McClinic Call Twins, comfortable, yep. but not comfortable so much with everybody around them and, and those people have it. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's exactly right. I think you're, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, you, you talk about practice speed versus game speed. Yep. Bonai, the offensive rebound, but it still won't go. There's some cellophane over that basket. Well, and I think a lot of coaches may have a tendency to stop things and, you know, then reset and not have that you know, chaos of back and forth and back and forth that a lot of times happens in a game. The no. Clinic Call Twins come back. Bo and I will get a breather. Alyssa Osborne will sit down as well. Fresh 30 on the shot clock and a lot of contact, no call. Ma had the rebound and there's a whistle now. Still in the common foul situation, so the Wildcats will bring it up with 2.02 left opening quarter. Yeah, Sabrina Ma, man, she's been down on her, she kind of took a whack on the old knees there, like a volleyball play. She needs some knee pads on. That was tough. And the SI girls are going to have a quick turnaround. They have the 9.30 game tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah, that's kind of like basketball camp in the Trying summer. To help those uh, out-of-town teams be able to get back home after the Saturday right. games. A little step through the lane, maybe a little extra step. I thought so, too. By Molly she, Ennis. She got lucky getting a the foul there, collecting the yeah. foul. Ramirez picks up the foul. That's her second. Who's going to break the, the tie here? Uh, you know, we're going to get off the four. <laughs> See, we get one before yeah, the end of the quarter. That's right. They got a minute, and a little over a minute and a half to go. There nice it is. Nice move by Sabrina Ma. A little crossover and got into the paint. I was. She did a good job of finishing. Really concentrated on until that ball went through the hoop. Ramirez looking inside. Nothing to it. The Clement call. Ramirez, another high arcing three that does not go. She takes an awkward fall after missing and a break opportunity for the Wildcats. Oh. And missing the breakaway layup was Ennis. Yeah, I could hear my father screaming in my ear right now. There's a $500 piece of glass up there. Let's use it. <laughs> it's probably worth more now. But uh, yeah, if, I think she if just would have used the backboard on that. She would have had a nice easy lay in. Jalene G checks in, a 5'7 senior for the Wildcats. Trying to get it inside to Ma, nothing doing, and there's the turnover. Uh, good defense. Way to read that play. Speaking of reading, Bonai looking for a pass, but nothing there, so she says, I'll just bury the three. Yeah, that was a great strength shot right there. That's hard to do just from the wing, come up and pull up and bury it. No answer this time by the Wildcats as Bonai hits the first three of the game and gives her team a one-point lead. Yeah, very nice job by Bonai out there. And she kept her head and eyes up, looking around to see if there was an opportunity for a you know, pass inside for a lay-in, but nothing, so she's pulled the trigger. Mike Mulcairn saw his girl score 75 in that first game. They are certainly not on that pace tonight. No. Bonai open again, different angle this time, different result. Good hustle by the Titans to keep it alive. Yeah, Tyler McClendon call there, good hustle. Officials are going to huddle and... Give that ball to SI. 
Kaylee Sobra Pena checks in for the first time for the Wildcats. So Mike McCarron is getting close to that 10 players that he said yes, he'd get out there in the he first quarter. He certainly is. Well, they've got something drawn up here. They want to start opposite and come back to the right. Bonai disrupts that, though, and gets the steal. Might have been a foul in backcourt as well, but it wasn't called. Yep. Titans can basically hold it for the final shot. Yeah, we got a little mono and mono going on out here at the, uh, the guard spot, so. Bonai gonna drive it, float it up, and it would have counted had it gone, but she'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, Kaylee had that turnover down here, and I think she was mad at herself. And, and as a coach, you hate to see that, because you, you do see that so often where, where one mistake compounds another with yes. a turnover and then a foul. Yep. Bonai at the free throw line, her first visit tonight. Yeah, I think their coach was discussing that with her right there. Yeah. And, and that's human nature, right? I mean, you know, someone gets you, you want to get them back. <laughs> Caroline Edwards back in for the Titans. Next one for Bonai up and good. She got them both. Yep. Her team up by three now. She has seven of their nine. Early season. You got 11 seconds left to get it up court and get a shot off. Have you worked on this in practice yet, Greg? Uh, yeah, you should. You should have a home run play. Uh, usually, I like to always finish with a practice with those. You know, I had two or three of them that I like to do. So Verpena lets it come up to save a little time. Seven seconds left. G with it. So Verpena back to G with two. We got an illegal screen call. So Verpena picks up her second foul. Now it's difficult. 1.7 to go three yeah. quarters length of the court. You want to try and get that pass into the front court here instead of the back court if you can help it, but didn't get it. They got a shot off. Came close. End of the first quarter. University. 9-6 over St. Ignatius. The Wildcats from San Francisco. Three quarters to go in this second girls game of the night here at Ferris. The Fitz on SWX. Do you have scrap metal hanging around the house? Action Recycling offers the top prices and quickest cash for cans and all kinds of scrap metal. Bring in scrap, get cash fast. Visit Action Recycling this week and get the most for your metal. I don't know what to get you for Christmas this year. Well, I have been looking at Kubota tractors lately. Well, just how good have you been? Kubota is Santa's favorite tractor. You can find your new Christmas Kubota at Coeur d'Alene, Boundary, or Adams Tractor. Your Kubota tractor dealers. This is a special moment for these players, for their families, uh, for the entire community. Inside Watson! Now on Sherman Avenue is your Ironman champion. One second on the clock. Oh! He's oh. going to the air and he's got oh, the one-handed snag for the touchdown. And the two-handed champion. The LCSC Warriors national champion, the Davenport Gorillas, state champion. I had a bunch of material left over from a remodel job, and Action Recycling gave me way more than I expected. Action Recycling is the home of top prices and quickest cash. Bring in scrap, get cash fast. Visit Action Recycling today. Tonight's basketball coverage on SWX brought to you by State Farm's Dave Christie and his team, making it simple to bring together what matters to you. And Dave Christie had a lot of fun watching his sons play in this gym. Yes. Jared Christie had a fantastic career here, went on to a very nice career, first at PLU and then at Whitworth. Yes, he did. I enjoyed watching him play and uh, 
watched him play against my sons. I didn't hear a lot. Yeah, he was a very good player. Very fun to, to watch. I'm glad. I know he went to WSU like his father and then decided to come back and play basketball. So it was good that he did. Second quarter underway, and you high with the basketball first. We're going to get a quick foul called on the Wildcats. That one on Jackie Acosta, her first. A great run by the Washington State women's soccer team. They made it to the final four of the College Cup. They actually took a one nothing lead over North Carolina early today, but uh, Carolina came back, beat them 2-1. I saw that, yeah, which is unfortunate, but a great season nonetheless. And, boy, I'll tell you, the uh, the Pac-10 football trying to cannibalize itself. Oregon up 20 to nothing on Utah. I know. Utah needs to not only win that game, but I think win it somewhat convincingly yes. to have a chance to get into the college football playoff. Yeah, and being down 20 to zero isn't helping their cause at the moment, unfortunately. Free throw up, no good by Allie Mills. 9-6 our score with University in the white. Leading 9-6. Acosta. Untalan. And that's McAdams who gets it to go. Her first field goal, and it's 9-8. Yeah, nice job. They're they going with a strong hand to the right there and a little Bob Cousy hook shot off the backboard and in. A little hesitation move. Boni gets the nice roll. That was a nice hesitation move there. Uh, I agree with you, bud. 11-8. Three-point lead. For the Titans, offense starting to pick up a little bit. Acosta couldn't get that to fall. The Titans running the other way, and there's going to be a block foul. That was almost a tackle foul. Rachel Harvey. She went right at her. Holy second. Cow. That's tough. When you get the foul, you bear the brunt of it. Yes. Oh, man. She just put her shoulder down and went right into her. There was no doubt about that. That's an easy call. I could have made that one probably. You could have, huh? Yeah. Tyler makes the first free throw, earns her another or third point. Good look at the young lady who will be playing with her sister at Portland State next year. Yeah, Rattles that one home. 13-8, wow. biggest lead of the ballgame for either team. Five-point advantage for the Titans. Yeah, that'll be fun. I know those whole twins are doing that down at Stanford, and it's always cool to watch those kids have a lot of success from the area. Acosta's going to head to the free throw line. She's all of a sudden become a little more aggressive. Yes. Allie Mills, her first. I think she fooled her a little bit with that left hand. Those lefties are always tough, I think, to guard when you're playing. And there's something about them. And, and why is it a lefty with a smooth stroke just looks so much cleaner than a righty with a smooth stroke? You know, stroke? I don't know what that is. I, I did the game on TV uh, for SWX on Wednesday. And C.J. Ellaby, the place for the Cougars, he's lefty and he, just super smooth. Yeah, they have a great shot. You know, uh, Chris Mullen. Yep. His lefties are fantastic. Wildcats having trouble at the free throw line. They've gone over two the last two trips there. Here's Boni off the screen. It won't go. Elsie with the rebound and she was fouled. And we'll go to the other end and shoot. Yeah, and uh, the Wildcats haven't, I don't know what the statistics are, but they've missed a lot of easy free throws today. I mean, they're all easy, but uh, just they've missed them. Soon John's made two of four. She'll get an opportunity here. Has to make the first in order to get the second. And no luck. So the stripe has not been charitable to the Wildcats so far. No, and I think they'd be leading this game if if, if they would have shot 75%. Uh, I don't know what the statistics is, but uh, it hasn't been good for them today. Whistle starting to pick up. That's the third foul on Rachel Harvey. That's trouble for Mike Mulcairns. It is. Or an opportunity for the next uh, person up. Well, That's what I always like to when say. When you're rotating 10 in, there's right. somebody ready to step Let's in. That's go. for sure. Yes. When you're, yeah, in this case, not the sixth person, but uh, sixth man, seventh, eighth, and ninth, they're going to get some more time. Five points now for Tyler McClement call. She has a chance for number six right here. Does not get the roll this time. 14 8, her team up. Battle for the ball in backcourt. Mills gets the steal. Yeah, good strength by Mills just to rip that away. And twin to twin it. pass. Tough shot. Knocked down by Tyler. She's got seven. Yeah, that was nice. 
It's a seven nothing run right now by the Titans. Acosta got that one to go on the yes. drive. Yeah, that'll help keep them in it. Bonai quickly Boy. showing her ability to hit the floater on the way. Both teams a little more aggressive offensively all of a sudden. Yeah, and that was a tough shot, uh, but I mean, over the front of the rim like that on the move, flying at the, at the hoop is tough. Reach foul going to be called. Looks on Mills. Nope. At Bonai, that's her second. See if Jay Kennedy likes to keep her out there with 535 in the second quarter, picking up her second foul. Yeah. She's such a mainstay on this team, they want to keep her involved. Well, and yeah, and she can do so many things out there, but she can handle the ball, she can go inside. I mean, she can play the wing, you know, she can kind of play almost every position, really. That breaks the uh, string of troubles at the free throw yes. line. Zuntalin makes the first. Knocks down a pair of them. She's got four points now. Six-point Titan lead at 18 to 12. Five and a half to play in the first half. St. Ignatius boys and the Ferris boys to follow. Should be a heck of a game. Yes, it should be. Titans reversing the court. Good job by you high to move the basketball without a lot of dribbling. Jackson McClellan call can't hit the three. One and done. Sabrina Ma back in with a rebound. Acosta then looking to drive. This time hands it off. Boy, that's a tough shot. I think they're calling the block. No, they're calling the travel beforehand. I thought he was going to whistle the block ahead of the shot. Yeah, I wasn't it was sure. It pretty what... impressive to get that in the hoop. It was, yeah, impressive. Yeah, I, I don't think that uh, St. Ignatius is too happy about the call, but it was a great shot nonetheless. Jackson McClendon call. Gets her first field goal. It's a three for the corner. Well, that's a five-point turnaround right there. Yes, it is. Wildcats aggressive at the other end, and Untalin doesn't get the call, but the ball comes loose to Elsie, who knocks it in. You know, I really like Untalin's game. She's, you know, like I said, long, and she plays with authority. She keeps her head up, sees the floor well, good defender. Did a nice basketball game. Bon Bonai knocks down the three. She's got 14 and warming up. Yes, she is. Boy, you want to keep a hand on her. Ellie Bonai, future Ram at Colorado State. Elsie can't convert, but got her own rebound. And a steal by the Titans. They'll get the ball back to the Wildcats. New Highs pushed the lead to 10 here in the second quarter. 24-14. Titans leading it. Ellie Bonai leading the way with 14 points. You're watching the Fits on SWX. Mechanics Pride Tire and Automotive is a full-service, complete professional auto repair shop. We repair autos, trucks, vans, 4x4s, and SUVs, and provide a complimentary shuttle service to and from your home or office. We are a local business serving the Spokane area for over 27 years. We take pride in providing you with the best automotive and tire service available. We have three locations for your convenience, downtown, Spokane Valley, and on the South Hill. Mechanics Pride, our pride is your satisfaction. Some jobs are a calling. They call on something higher, something deeper, and a commitment to country that never dies. At Giza Credit Union, we help you support local veterans. With every purchase you make with a Giza Local Heroes Affinity Debit Card, we make a donation to select veterans organizations. After all, we can never repay them, but we can do our best to help a little. With the Giza Veterans Affinity Debit Card. Big part of the Fitz basketball tournament is giving back. That's something Dan did in this community. The girls' teams visit. What's the what's, what's the big, what, you should know this? Come on, what's the name of the beach? Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, oh, Bikini yeah, right. Atoll or whatever. So, Bikini, Bikini Bottom. Bottom. Yeah. yeah there you now go. there, look at that. Just some nice cleaning at the Ronald McDonald House today, helping out the girls' teams, helping out at Ronald McDonald. The the boys' teams go to Union Gospel Mission, just part of the 
Yeah, that's great. Charitable event of this tournament. Yes, uh, that is good. My wife runs a charity uh, a nonprofit in the Valley, and it's good to see kids do those sort of things. The volunteer help is yep. immensely needed. It is. Elsie has her sixth point, 24-16. Yeah, that was big, I think, but they needed that just to not let this get too far away from them. Turnover, chance yeah. to score it again. Yes. Good pass by Acosta. Elsie knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Titan ball. Pretty aggressive play by both teams. They both crash the boards hard. They they move on the floor. Both teams pretty well. It's a pretty good game, especially for the first game uh, for Uhi anyway. Yeah. The season. Yeah. They played a jamboree, but right. A limited opportunity there. Yeah, I think that was a big shot there. Another three by McClendon. Jackson McClement call. Oh yeah. Her sister's coming back in here. Oh, and they get the turnover going the other direction. Wow. Bonai will sit down and Tyler McClement call in. Reagan Grady, a 5'9 freshman, checks into lineup for the first time for the Wildcats of SI. Made the trip from San Francisco. Contact on the drive. Free throws coming. You know, the one thing that I really like in college and, and certainly the uh, NBA, but now in college is the half circle under the hoop. I think it makes it a lot easier for players and officials to make that block, charge, call, you know, or the, you know, outside that zone or inside that zone. And just makes it, I think it's cleaner for both teams. I thought that was a charge, personally. It, it makes it a little more clear-cut, that's yes. for sure. Yeah, I think so. Kids know where they need to go and set their feet and, you know, be set. I was wondering if it was another one of those things that was going to make it difficult on officials because it's another focal point they have to have. Right. But, they, but they've adapted to it very well. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, and I think it makes it easier for them to make that call, especially with three-man mechanics because then one person can focus on that and see it. There's the steal for the Titans. Ramirez, the freshman. They'll reset the half-court offense now. And quite often it'll go through that young lady who gets her own rebound, Tyler McClimmick Calm, and she's tied up. Yeah, I don't think Tyler did a very good job there of recognizing what she had. I mean, she tried to take it in there to a jungle, and I think she had a teammate on the wing that was wide open for an easy jump shot. Could have just easily passed over there and... Instead of the tie-up, they called Claire Untelin for the foul. That's her first, the fourth of this quarter. And the bonus situation, of course, for the Titans. They've been in that for a while now. And Tyler making a living at the free throw line. She has 10 points, just two field goals. It's a good place to do it if you can get it. This is number two. It's 30 to 16, four point. 14-point advantage for the Titans and a foul in backcourt. And apparently somebody on the uh, SI bench helping to officiate. Yes, I think so. Alyssa Osborne, the foul. There's a good look at what we were referring to earlier on the shoulder of Rachel Harvey, the cupping on the shoulder. Got you choked up. You going to be okay, Greg? It does. Yeah, excuse me. Finishing a head cold here. Sorry about that. Molly Ennis comes back in. Spells her first name M-A-L-I. Yeah, I saw that. I, yeah, I have a sister named Molly, and I n didn't notice that spelling was interesting. I'm not sure what the officials were conferring about over here, but... Oh, is that what I shot clock? Okay. Thank you. Guys, guys in the truck know what's going on. That's they good. Do. Yeah. Well, I was doing CPR as you were coughing, so I missed yes, what was thank going you. on. thank you, right. <laughs> Sabrina Ma makes the there first free throw, earns her another. Yeah. She got them both. Four points for her now. Her team down by a dozen, though, at 30 to 18. Two and a half left in the quarter. They'd like to cut the lead, at least get it to single digits? Yes, I think so. That would be nice if they could hit a three here, and get a stop, you know, get any kind of bucket for sure, but you definitely want to get a stop. They There's got the stop. stop. Yep. You know, take your time, get set up. You know, the defense is already back and set, so let's run our best play. Acosta with it now between the circles. It's a three-hoisted high arcing three Boy, that doesn't that go, was. but Wildcats able to run it down. 
Ma will try the three and chance for a four-point play, but the shot doesn't go, but she'll get three free throws. And Ramirez picks up her third foul. That's tough. Freshmen tend to tend to do that. Get a little too aggressive offensively. You got to pick your spots. Yes. So Sabrina Ma, who missed her ter- first two free throws, then made two, will get three opportunities here. Yeah, it's interesting when how teams set up and do some things, bud, that when uh, number 12, Jackie Acosta, is in there and they're running that three-man weave, they want to start on the right side because she's left hand and goes to her strong side coming back from the right to the left. So she can you know, cut across, use that strong left hand because she's left-handed versus going up to the left and bringing their better player back around with their strong hand, the right, right hand. Ma's had a couple of tough rolls on the first two. We'll see if this one will go for her. Certainly did. Yep. Nothing but net. Don't have to worry about the roll. 30 to 19, 11-point Titan lead, under two to play in the first half. Yep, now it's just about playing good solid D and getting a stop here again. Bonai trying to post up, ball was kicked. It's one thing they still do with high school girls with the clock reset. In fact, I see the problem now. You got one, one shot clock reset to 30. The other was at 22. Now they're, now they're synced up. Nice entry pass to Bonai, but she couldn't handle it. Turnover by the Titans. And they get the steal right back. Yeah, her coaches or somebody should have yelled out, hey, Wolf, you know, there's someone behind you. Step through doesn't go. They'll give the ball to the Wildcats. It's Paige Jess, a sophomore, 5'6 sophomore, yep. out there for the Titans. You know, it's always tough when you're on the road, you're sleeping in a, you know, a hotel room or a foreign bed, you know, and it's playing in a gym you're not used to. Officiating is a little bit different. Uh, so you know, it may take a bit of time to get used to doing that, you know, hitting your shots and getting in the background and all that. But I think uh, the Wildcats are doing a good job of hanging in here. It's a two-pointer for Reagan Grady. Makes it a nine-point game. Titans unable to answer. It's a 5 nothing run right now by the Wildcats. And the foul in backcourt. Yeah. And that's Boney just got a little too aggressive there. Yeah, and that's a foul you're, you don't like as a coach so far away from the basket. That's your third foul. Right, with one minute to go in the half. Absolutely. So she will not be back on the court this half. She'll take her 14 points to the bench. Ma at the strike. Well, she's had plenty of practice here yes, in the she last has. minute. Yes, that's her fourth free throw here in less than a minute. I don't have the, the free throw numbers added up yet, but there have been quite a few more opportunities for the Wildcats than there have been for the Titans at the strike. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't think if you're, you know, the visiting team here, meaning uh, St. Ignatius, that you should be upset with the officiating, really. You've got a lot of opportunities to get to the charity stripe. Well, they've cut it to seven right now with 55 seconds left of the half. The Clement call on the dribble, trying to get the play call with that tap on the forehead and kicks it into backcourt. I think it was Acosta's leg that hit it, though, so it shouldn't be. That's been called by the officials. Now they got to get it up with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Osborne. Baseline jumper. The Clement call doesn't go and a rebound foul. Yeah, I actually don't think it was touched. I think it went off of the U-High player's foot. I don't think that the St. Ignatius player hit that, but... Uh, and I think that's what the coach for St. Ignatius is saying to the official right now. Listen, man, you missed that one. And now they shoot free throws. <laughs> free throw by Christensen, good. I thought it went off of the Costas, but so you and I each saw it differently. Let's yeah, take a look. Yeah, here's see a look. Yeah, right. Let's see. I'll get my glasses okay. on. Maybe that'll help. That that was probably my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have those on. So. Both free throws good by Katie Christensen, 32-23 with 30 seconds left. SI trailing with the basketball. Grady, who just hit the three, gives it up. She'll get another chance. She could not have shot that ball in the junior high gyms I played in. No, absolutely not. That was hitting the ceiling. That is high arcing. <laughs> that was high arcing. And, oh, it didn't get the same touch. There's six seconds left in the half. Holy I'm cow. glad our cameras are able to follow I the ball know, that's that high. That's I impressive. Good too, work, yeah. guys. Yeah. 
6.3 seconds left. Six-point advantage, Titans, and they have a chance to add to that if they can convert here. They have to hustle to get a shot off. Jackson McClendon calls it a couple of threes, but that'd be a real long one. They don't get a shot off. Yeah, I don't think McClendon call had any idea what the time was left in the game there, or the half, I mean. So SI's got to be happy with a little bit of a run that they put together turned into a 10 to 2 run to close things within six they were down by 14 and now trail just 32 26 as we get ready for intermission one more game to follow to be the si boys against the ferris boys we'll talk more about the fitz basketball tournament as we continue a six-point lead for you high at the half the fitz on swx If you were thinking about going to Gonzaga Prep, I would want you to know that the teachers aren't here to just teach the subjects. They're here because they truly appreciate each kid. They know your name. They want to help you succeed not only in the classroom, but mind, body, and spirit. And it helps to bring us closer to others and to God at the same time. You just can't get that anywhere else. The school makes an effort to build a community that lasts for a long time. I found my place at Gonzaga Prep. Find your place by visiting gprep.com. Mechanics Pride Tire and Automotive is a full-service, complete professional auto repair shop. We repair autos, trucks, vans, 4x4s, and SUVs, and provide a complimentary shuttle service to and from your home or office. We are a local business serving the Spokane area for over 27 years. We take pride in providing you with the best automotive and tire service available. We have three locations for your convenience, downtown, Spokane Valley, and on the South Hill. Mechanics Pride, our pride is your satisfaction. Some jobs are a calling. They take passion and a devotion to the community. They're here for your kids, guiding the next generation of leaders. At Giza Credit Union, we help you support local teachers. Every purchase you make with the Giza Local Heroes Affinity Debit Card, we make a donation to select teacher organizations. After all, we can never repay them, but we can do our best to help a little. With the Giza Teachers Affinity Debit Card. State Farm Agent Dave Christie is here to help protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Dave Christie and his team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. The Fitz on SWX and the Halftime Report. Powered by Facetol, proud to support our local athletes. Ninth annual Dan Fitzgerald Memorial Basketball Tournament. We are at Ferris High School. We've moved a little further south on Spokane South Hill. The first eight years of this event at Lewis and Clark High School. Now we're at Ferris. Bud Damick joined by Greg Hannon. Mike McGann, one of the founders of this basketball tournament, joins us. Mike, always fun to, to see this tournament going. And being from the state of Oregon, you like these Oregon teams that come in here. And we saw the Beaverton girls earlier play well and get their first win in their second appearance. In the yeah, place. we saw Beaverton a couple years ago when these kids were sophomores. And I had an eye on them. And uh, it's a husband and wife kind of team there, Kathy Adelman Nero. Uh, well coached team. I think they lost in the semis last year. And it looks like they're just as tough as this year again. So yeah. I, th I think they played that team pretty tough. You know, CD's a pretty tough team. And, so, and the coaches game. have three of their uh, their youngsters playing for them. Three daughters, they, were, yes. uh, they all all participated in that victory. Yeah, that must be pretty exciting for that to happen. But I can I know I coach my own son. I can't imagine coaching three of my kids <laughs> right, at the same time. Right. Wow. It yes. takes a lot of discipline for that. But I think Kathy and John do a good job with that. Yeah, it is tough. I played for my father, so I know how tough it can be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Mike, you've been a fixture on SWX during the, the Fitz tournament in the past, but let's, let's remind folks of, of why you have this tournament near and dear to your heart. Yeah, well, uh, a friend of mine, Greg Heinrichs, and I um, both were co coached and taught by Dan Fitzgerald at Archbishop Midi back in the late 60s. And, you know, we followed his career all throughout Gonzaga, obviously, and even when he, Northern Quest uh, always were in contact. And when he died suddenly, you know, nine, ten years ago, 
uh, we thought we needed to do something. The man was an incredible man. He influenced my life. I, it's the reason I became a coach and athletic director for 35 years. And I can still resonate things that he said to me. You know, we're in it together. It was one of the biggest things. I probably can't repeat a couple of those things he told me. <laughs> but it, in it together Even was like Fitz a... Fitz is laughing at yeah, you. Yeah. It, in it together meant to me that we were a team, we were a family. And you know, the worst player on the team was just as important as the best player on the team. And I think that philosophy as a coach... Uh, Help me become successful, I think. But this was a, a one of a kind. And this tournament is all about love. It's all about passion about basketball. And it's all about Dan Fitzgerald. And the more I meet people at this tournament, the more I see that overlapping. And there's so many, it's like, you know, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. I mean, it's like, like 20 degrees of Dan Fitzgerald in this place. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, I'm in Spokane because of Dan Fitzgerald. And, and when he passed away, I, I called Darlene and, and talked to her and, and, and said, hey, I'd like to do something to try to, to keep Dan's legacy alive. Maybe basketball tournament, maybe something else. And she goes, well, there's some guys from, from Mini who have the same idea. And so she got us together. And it turns out, I didn't know you, but I've gotten to know you very well since yep. we started this tournament. But Greg Heinrichs, who you referred to, was actually my summer league baseball coach <laughs> when I was in high school. And, and so when hey, I, when I that made old. that call, Greg's I know, not that old, he, he was only a couple years old. <laughs> but when he called, and I was like, Greg Heinrichs, I know you. And, and so it was amazing that such a small world that, that here from the Bay Area to Spokane yep. fits touch so many lives. Well, he's, but... Um, with all kidding aside, uh, one of the reasons we really are up here because the Bay Area really wasn't going to support this down there. And we kept hearing you say, hey, bring it up here. Bring it up to Spokane. So uh, that was nine years ago, almost ten years ago now, when we met at the Onion Restaurant. Yes, I remember that well. <laughs> yeah, I do too. And it's, uh, it's, we never thought it would be like this ever. It's just it's one of the best tournaments that everybody that comes here says it's the best tournament they've ever been to. In fact, we had a coach here before we even played a game, wanted to be invited back yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah. Just the hospitality. And Mike, the way is our, by the way, is our official greeter. He greets the teams <laughs> when they arrive at, at Northern Quest and, and does so many things behind the scenes. Mike. I hope I don't scare everybody when they come in. But <laughs> I appreciate your friendship. And thanks for all you do. Greatly all right, appreciate Thank it. you very much. Mike McGann is a part of the Fitz Committee. Our score at halftime of this one is University 32. The St. Ignatius Wildcats 26. It's the ninth annual Fitz Basketball Tournament on SWX. In the weather, my advice is to get prepared fast. Snow is in the forecast and coming soon. <laughs> Kubota is Santa's favorite tractor. You can find your new Christmas Kubota at Coeur d'Alene, Boundary, or Adams Tractor. Your Kubota tractor dealers. Boys, I'll take all five Kubotas. <laughs> Mechanics Pride Tire and Automotive is a full-service, complete professional auto repair. Contest between University, the Titans of Spokane Valley, and the Contest between University, the Titans of Spokane Valley, and the Wildcats of St. Ignatius from San Francisco. It's the Fitz on SWX. Some jobs take more than skill. They require something deeper, an innate devotion to the communities in which we live. At Giza Credit Union, we help you support law enforcement, firefighters, teachers, and veterans. With every purchase you make with the Giza Local Heroes Affinity Debit Card, we make a donation to select organizations. After all, we can never repay them, but we can do our best to help a little. With the Giza Local Heroes Affinity Debit Card. I don't know what to get you for Christmas this year. Well, I have been looking at Kubota tractors lately. Well, just how good have you been? <laughs> Kubota is Santa's favorite tractor. You can find your new Christmas Kubota at Coeur d'Alene, Boundary, or Adams Tractor. Your Kubota tractor dealers. Hachimura! 
University Titans with the six-point advantage at halftime. Basketball at SWX brought to you by Giza Credit Union. It's the Fitz Basketball Tournament, the ninth annual. We're in Ferris High School. Bud Damick along with Greg Hannon. Greg, we talked about the slow start offensively for these two teams. How about you high shot 16%, 17% in the, in the first quarter, 20% in the first quarter for St. Ignatius. In the second quarter, 50% for the Titans and 55% for the Wildcats. Yeah, that's what's kept them in it. That and, uh, you know, they've done a good job of uh, rebounding uh, City Ignatius. If they're nine for 18 from the free throw line, if they were shooting a little bit better, they, you know, we'd have a one or two point ball game here. And, and the Titans have done a better job of the strike 10 of 13. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's really kept their lead. Wildcat basketball, they're in the red. Back on the court, Rachel Harvey who picked up three fouls. Her playing time was limited in the first half. And a reach foul going to be called on Carol Ann Edwards. First foul of the second half on the Titans. Well, that was a, a good set that they uh, St. Ignatius ran right there. They tried to run a double on the offside here. It didn't work. It was uh, read pretty well by uh, University High School. And uh, so then they came up and tried to run a high ball screen and ended up picking, a foul, picking up a foul off that. See if Angie McAdams, who's inbounding the ball, gets more active on the offensive end. She was honorable mention all San Francisco a year ago and has just one field goal so far in this game. That's Sabrina Ma rattles home yep. the little jumper. She's got nine. Yeah, she's had a nice, nice game so far. A good first half, and she's starting off hot in the second. Four-point game. Ellie Bonai, who picked up a third foul back in there. Tyler McClement call has a dozen. And I think that move right there but tells you why she's going to play division one basketball next year just crossover you know that was kind of michael jordan-esque or any kind of great player has that move acosta can't convert bonai comes out of the rebound for the wildcats on the run three on two ma the block bonai gets it back and exchanges a two for a three but it doesn't go mcclemmon call a good hustle on the rebound and a reach foul going to be called on the wildcats Yeah, interesting exchange right there. Bonai, you know, really challenged the defense, but got it blocked. Ended up recovering her block shot and then uh, took another three and missed, but Yuhai ended up with the ball. Well, they defend the spin move well. Yes. Harvey, the long pass through the hands of Acosta. And that's another turnover. The 13th by the Wildcats. Yeah, and I don't think that was going to Acosta in my estimation. I think she just got in the way <laughs> because it was a little high for her. But the player right behind her, it would have been perfect for and for the land. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Sorensen to the radio to the right. He was worried because the all their gear went yeah, up in their it, lap. It, on yeah. their table. They don't think they have a strong enough table. <laughs> right. Turnover by the Titans. Yeah. That's because earlier in the, the game previously, they dumped the whole that, table. That whole table, I saw it go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Sorensen's never been accused of being dainty. No. <laughs> Here's Acosta and the Wildcats with it. They're down six right now. Six minutes, 25 seconds left to play third quarter in the Ferris High School gym. And there's uh, Mc, or Harvey getting involved. That was a pretty shot. Could come in and get that jump shot in the middle, a little hook. She's going to be a Matador, Cal State Northridge next year. Okay, yeah, nice. A little gimmicky defense playing on Boni a little bit at the top. Ooh, yeah, that's a good call, I think. Well, that could be number four on Harvey if it's hers. Nope, they got McAdams, her right. second. It's a break for the Wildcats. Yeah, it certainly is there, but I, I totally agree. It is, a, it is a break for them. Acosta almost gets Ooh. the steal. Titans get away from the double team, and there's, no, there's that fourth foul on Rachel Harvey. Yeah, just a little late on the run and jump. You know, she saw the double team coming out there and then tried to jump that pass, but got there a hair late. Trying to get a sub in in time, and they do. So that's tough, because Harvey was honorable mention all San Francisco a year ago, so they rely on her to score it. Yep. She has to go to the bench with that fourth foul. Yeah, but I, and I think Claire, number 21, who they brought in, is a good player. She's the one with the ball right here, and as soon as I say that, she has a turnover. And a collision. But I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think you high got the foul there, yes. They did. 
Jackson McClements call. Second team foul of the half. Four point game. Wildcats were down 14 in the second quarter. Yeah, Soon they've made a good, a good, sorry to interrupt you there, a good uh, comeback here. A nice little run. Could have tied it uh, or got in within one right there, but didn't knock down that shot. Tyler McClimmick called, will pull up at the free throw line, got it. Yeah, that's the second time there. That's a very pretty move. I think both these coaches, if you would ask them ahead of time, would say, yeah, we'd love to play in a close game. Good experience for down the road. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Good weak side defense by Tyler McClendon call to force the tie up. It'll be U-high basketball on the alternating possession. You know, the one nice thing when you're on the road, bud, uh, as a team, and, you know, you're not going to be scouted by the local teams. You know, no one's going to fly to Spokane unless maybe they can get in here and find out it's on TV or something. But... It's great that you can come up and do your own stuff, work on some things, and if you have a tough game, you know you know what you, you're capable of. And none of the other teams do necessarily. They don't have film or anything, so that could be a nice luxury yes. down the road. Yep. Bonai unable to convert as she pulled up on the drive. SI a chance to cut into this University High School lead. This Acosta coming over to the left side. Set play to set up the three for Ma. She can't convert though. Yeah, a lot of teams call that Arizona. Arizona used to run that. Used to pinch there at the top. They didn't quite get the pinch, but. Jackson McClendon call, misses the three. She made a couple. They got it in the first half. Chance for a break here. Back to Untelin. Untelin, and she can't hit it, but she'll go to the stripe. Foul's called on Tyler McClendon call. That's her second. Two free throws coming for Claire Untelin, who made a pair in the first half. Yeah, for sophomore, Claire, you know, she, I think she's got a lot of upside. She's got, looks, you know, got that long basketball-type body that, you know, coaches like to see. And, and she's getting a lot of good experience out here playing against some, you know, future D1 players. As I mentioned earlier, she's a, a prospective Division I volleyball player. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you mentioned that. I can see that, too. And Coach Mulcairn's hoping she decides <laughs> yeah, to continue to play basketball yes, for a while. right, or all the way through her high school career, for sure. 36-31, five-point advantage for the Titans who have the ball. Alyssa Osborne. Tyler McClendon calls it knocked away. Turnover. Chance for a break for Untelin. She got it to go, and she'll get one more. Boy, and that was a great job by Utsuman because she went to her weak hand, or left hand there, and uh, really did a nice job of putting that in there softly up with the foul. Jackson McClendon called the foul, her second. That's a great move. Good camera work, too. Might have a two-point game here. That's Either way, right. it's a yeah. one-possession game. Right. If our uh, camera guy crew down there always does such a great job getting those great shots. That's why he's wearing the shoulder pads, though, in case one That's of those right. guys comes into his grill. Titans miss. Ma the rebound and a chance for a tie ball game here. Well, yeah, the momentum has really shifted, I feel, a little bit in this game. And that, uh, you know, St. Ignatius is picking it up. Foul's called on Carol Ann Edwards. That's her second and already the fifth of the half on the Titans. The last time that SI led was at 6-4 in the first quarter. It's 36-34. You high right now. The Fitz on SWX. State Farm agent Dave Christie is here to help protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services... Dave Christie and his team make it simple to bring together what matters to you.
Fitz basketball coverage being sponsored in part by State Farm's Dave Christie and his team. Make it simple to bring together what matters to you and Mechanics Pride. Full service auto repair, now three Spokane locations at Turview, downtown, Valley, and South. And if you're here in the Ferris area, stop at the South location. Sad to Tony and the gang there, they'll take great care of you. 36-34, you high two-point advantage, but Sabrina Ma headed to the free throw line. She's been a frequent visitor to the strike. Yes, she has. She's made five of nine so far in this game. Good look at the sophomore from San Francisco. That's her 10th point, and if she can knock down this one, we have a tie ball game. There it is. Oh, I thought there it was, but well, they got a chance to take the lead now. Tough shot. Claire Runtelin won't go. That's good rebound by Claire, though. Five nothing run by the Wildcats to make it a one point game. Boni to Mills. Osborne now on the perimeter. Jackson McClement call. Overplayed by Ma. She's got the steal and a chance. And it counts, and she'll get a free throw. Wow. I'm not sure I agreed with the foul call actually on that. I, I thought Bona stepped away from that and uh, just didn't do anything. Just kind of let it go. Yeah, I, that, fairly incidental, but that's the fourth foul on Bona. That's a big one. Yeah, that is a big one. I agree. That comes at the 327 mark. We'll see what Coach Jay Kennedy elects to do in this situation. Yeah. Ma makes the free throw and makes it 38-36. The lead changes hands. Yes, it does. See if the Titans have an answer. Bonai still in there. This might be her last offensive possession for a while. She pulls up, can't get it to go. Didn't get the hack either. She's got to be careful, too. Ball being ping-ponged around, and McAdams comes out of there for the Wildcats. Tough to get a high school team's attention to get him to attack Bonai now in this situation with her on the court still. Right. So Brapena on the dribble out high for the Wildcats. Ten on the shot clock. But it looks like that's what they're trying to do, or they were. Untelin trying to penetrate. Oh. Lost the handle and might have traveled, and the ball comes loose. Long pass down. Osborne got it up and in. Yeah, that, that was a great play right there. Beautiful pass. It was. Very beautiful. Two and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. We're tied at 38. Great to have you with us tonight on SWX. Oh, Turnover. Two key turnovers in a row. And, and a foul. foul. And that's three on McAdams all in this third quarter. Yeah, I think that St. Ignatius is going to have to sub a couple people in and out. Acosta and Grady back for the Wildcats. Ramirez. And I believe it was Tyler McClellan Call who came back in for the Titans. Yes. Good look ahead, overhead at the action here from the Ferris gym. The Ferris boys will be on the court against SI for our next matchup that we'll bring to you here on SWX. Still a lot of time on the shot clock. McClellan Call will step and shoot the three. No good. Too long, but she got her own rebound. Too tall on the pass. Turnover on the Titans. They only lose six of those in the first half. I've got them with five in this third quarter. Yeah, just a little lackadaisical, you know, kind of one-handed, throw it across the court, too high. I think just make an easier pass there. You know, game's tied. No big hurry to do anything here. Just relax a little bit. Acosta, Grady, who had a couple threes. A couple buckets, one of them a three. There's the jumper, good. Sabrina's having a real nice game. She is. But, uh, but she's... It's up to 15 points now. Really yeah. been the spark plug for her team's resurgence. Yeah, she has almost half of her points, so... Titans get a break as the loose ball comes back to him. Ball hits the official. That's out of bounds. And it'll be U high ball. Minute 20 remaining in quarter number three. I'm not sure how that official even saw that. He was ducking to get out of the way of the ball. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm not going to argue with you because you had the right call in the first half. Oh, well, you, there you, you go. You were right on that. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying you didn't have the right call there. I'm just not sure how he no, saw I, it. Yeah. The ball, he was ducking. The ball was coming at his head. Natural reaction, of course. The ball is wide open in the corner. And she's been hot. And she's still hot. That's 18. Is that right? Yes, it is. Oh, and her team yeah. has a five-point lead now. Yeah, big turnaround. And she just got another steal, wow. bud, going the other way. Sabrina doing it all. Heck, yeah. I think if you're you high, you need to get a timeout here and settle the troops down. I guess you're getting an automatic timeout in 50 seconds, but... Ma now has 20, 13 of those in this quarter. And her team up seven. They were down 14 at one point. Yeah, that's a huge turnaround. You high could really use a bucket to change the momentum yeah, here going I, into the I, fourth quarter. I agree. And Acosta almost gets the steal down to nine on the shot clock. McClemmick call. They're pointing as though that was a charge. Yeah, I think it was a block. I, I thought it was a block, yeah. yeah. I think that so was. Too, yeah. Soon Jai second foul. Free throws coming for Tyler McClement call. Well, and you high got what they wanted there, which was a switch, and helped them draw that foul. She's six of eight at the stripe tonight, and that one is good. Her 15th point. We're gonna have a good fourth quarter, that's for sure. That's for sure. She gets them both. 16 now for Tyler. 45-40. They're going to get a timeout, I think. Call you Kreskin. Yeah, well, I could see him down there, so <laughs> uh, I wish I was, you could say I was Karnak, but I'm not. 22.4 <laughs> remaining in this quarter with SI up 45-40 to 40 over UI. You take a quick glance at that SI logo and you used to see the Spokane Indians play here on SWX. Yes. It'd be nice with this baseball weather right now. Right. There's a good look at that logo. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's got to be from Crew. Nice job, Crew. It is. I heard that uh, the Indians may be going to long A instead of short A. Well, we're going to see very soon that they're going to rule about that. They're trying to eliminate a number of minor league teams, right. which is a shame, I think. Yes. Because minor league baseball is healthy. It's super healthy. It's great. Fun too. Great to go to a game. I hosted a couple of those kids one year and really? Indians. Yeah, a lot of fun and they were great kids and the organization's great. I think I saw Tri City and Salem Kaiser. I think are the two teams that are going to be eliminated from the Northwest League. But still, time for decisions to be made on that and how it might affect the Spokane Indians. Yeah, he just reminded me. Speaking of baseball, I got a caller guy. Ryan Sandberg's brother called me the other day. Oh, I was that right? busy. I didn't get a chance to call him back. He was coming to town. So he recruited my son to play some college basketball. And great guy, great family. His son's a bench coach for the Mariners, actually. Well, let's see what the Wildcats have drawn up for yeah, this final see possession. How they do here in the last 20 seconds. I'm guessing everybody thinks the ball's going to Sabrina Moss somehow. <laughs> no, no kidding. Yeah. We're going to get a high ball screen here, I think. Acosta's still on the dribble. Ball deflected out of bounds. Ramirez, the defense for the Titans. Now 8.1 left, so maybe that timeout you called on the play you called, you can't run now. Yeah. But the, maybe you still can. The clock uh, didn't really want to stop there. Uh, okay, they went to 9.3. Gained a little bit. Yeah, well, I think he stopped it, but it just kept running, I think. All right, the inbound to Sabrina Ma. Does she go to work one-on-one? -on -one? Nope, she gives it up to Untalin. Untalin, the runner off glass, doesn't get Boy, the roll. close. End of quarter number three. We've got a good one. Yeah. A big third quarter by the Wildcats of St. Ignatius. Huge. They turn a deficit of six into a lead of five. It's 45-40 as we head to quarter number four on the Fitz on SWX. If you were thinking about going to Gonzaga Prep, I would want you to know that the teachers aren't here to just teach the subjects. They're here because they truly appreciate each kid. They know your name. They want to help you succeed not only in the classroom, but mind, body, and spirit. And it helps to bring us closer to others and to God at the same time. You just can't get that anywhere else. The school makes an effort to build a community that lasts for a long time. I have found my place at Gonzaga Prep. Find your place by visiting gprep.com.
this is a special moment for these players, for their families, uh, for the entire community. Inside, one second. Now on Sherman Avenue is your Ironman champion. One second on the clock. Oh, he's going to the air and he's got close. The one-handed snag for the touchdown. Two back to Lawrence, and the two This season, get all the goals, hits, and big game action with NorthwestPreptsNow.com. Your source for high school sports coverage. Follow team standards, full schedules, game scores, and video highlights all in one place with the combined power of the Spokesman Review and SWX. NorthwestPreptsNow.com. Powering high school sports coverage like the Inland Northwest has never seen before. The Fitz on SWX, sponsored by your local Kubota dealers, Coeur d'Alene Tractor, Adams Tractor, and Boundary Tractor. Proud to support our local athletes. Heck of a third quarter for the Wildcats as they outscore the Titans 19-8 with Sabrina Ma scoring 13 of those for SI. They have a five-point lead and the basketball to start quarter number four. Bud Namick along with Greg Hannon. We're joined by Jeff Norton, the former head basketball coach at Lewis and Clark and athletic director at LC and a founding member of the Fitz committee and we're seeing good basketball as usual in the Fitz Jeff as, as usual and uh, again we're seeing good good play out of our out-of-town teams and uh, wow how about the Mount Spokane Wildcats they put on Tyson Dengard uh, reached the Fitz record book uh, 31 points 31 points he didn't take the overall number one spot but he certainly will be in the top five and another chance to replicate that tomorrow yeah, I saw the end of that game, and uh, he he's a load. Well. Yes, he, he, he is. is. He is playing big boy basketball on a different level than most of those guys out there. Yes, he is. Ellie Boni back off the bench with that fourth foul. Gets the opportunity for the three-point play, but only gets the bucket to make it a three-point game. Really good first game. Uh, yes. I, I honestly didn't expect it to be as close as it was. That Beaverton girls team is... Not only locally in in Portland and in Oregon, ranked number one, um, and up and down the West Coast, I know they're top ten in a lot of rankings too. They're getting some national recognition uh, in some polls too. And Central Valley Bears, good offensive execution, got some good stops when they needed to, hung in there, just couldn't quite get all the way caught up after they'd been down for a while. Three pointer would tie this thing up for the Titans. See if Boni will attempt that. Yeah, and that's, that's something CV's used to. Uh, they, uh, they're used to winning. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. They are. Um, obviously not, you know, the, the individual talent that they're used to have in the past few years. You know, there's nobody out there named Similunk or Hall or, or Hall, Christopher. Right. Or, you yeah. know, so. But certainly there is some, you know, there's some physical talent that will serve them well as the yep. year goes on. Absolutely. Soon John Ellis, he can't. Knock it down from the paint. And a good rebound by Tyler McClimmon call. Long pass to her sister Jackson to Boni. Thought she was going straight up. She didn't, but she'll end up going to the free throw line. Well, the spark seems to be back in U High now, but uh, they kind of lost it in that third quarter. And the momentum really had shifted uh, to uh, the Wildcats, but now it seems to be going the other direction. I don't know what their coach said, but whatever it was, it worked. I thought the Titans were a little unorganized offensively, just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not work, working hard, but just kind of a little unorganized and uh, confused about what they were doing. And who was doing what? Exactly. Who was going to take what shot? Yeah. Exactly. We had talked about that. There was a couple, not, you know, single up with Clipper Call, but she went into three people, had a wide open person on her right, and could have just chucked it over there, and then... Luckily, she got fouled, but yeah, yeah, I was just a little disorganized. Well, in that and we quarter. know, you know, at this point in the year, Coach Hannon, that offense will be behind defense in the development. And, yep. You know, everybody's even though it's a veteran team, everybody's still, you know, trying to define their roles and, like you said, who's going to take what shots on what yep. part of the floor? Where can I be successful? That's right. And 
this is their first game. I know they had a jamboree, and uh, St. Ignatius has played once before. Yeah. And there's Ma again, just filling it up tonight. 23 now. That stops a 7-0 run by the Titans that had tied it up. Three-point lead for the Wildcats. And Bonai's been huge in this fourth quarter, and she's going to go back to the free throw line. Yeah, and the nice thing about her with her style of play now is she's got four fouls, but she hasn't let up with her aggressiveness. Certainly going to the hole. Couple of free throws coming for Ellie, the 5'10 senior. So, Jeff, you know, and as a director, how do you go about picking some of these teams? Uh, you have a process uh, that you do, or do you get phone calls yeah. because it's gone so well, or what? You know, I, I tell the story that when we first started, you know, and this is number nine, but I, I remember year one and year two literally having to go out and beg people. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. hey, we're starting this thing, and, you know, it helped reaching out at that time to some people that had connections to Coach Fitz. Um, at that time, he had a nephew that was coaching at Cheney, you know, so they were in. Uh, yep. A friend of mine, actually, who was coaching um, in the Vancouver area, I reached out to. You know, so those, you got to use those connections uh, early, you know. Now that we've got it off the ground, though, I, I have people call me. Uh, yeah, that's good. And I have already fielded, you know, questions and requests uh, from people, including SI. We were talking with uh, coaches from SI. Hadn't even played a game yet but already wanting to come back just because of the experience that they were already having uh, just from the Thursday night banquet and, uh, yeah. you know, the great hospitality from the committee and the, the resort. Um. That's good. So, yeah, it's – but to back to your question, yeah, there's a process. You know, I, I think we're, one of our guiding principles is we want to put the best basketball on the floor that we possibly can. Sure. That's how we go about choosing the local teams. Mm -hmm. um, I think certainly Central Valley and U High would have to be considered with Mount Spokane girls who yeah. were just in the tournament last year. Would have to be considered with them, you know, at the elite level of the GSL this year. And, again, with the Mount Spokane boys and the Ferris boys. Um, Kind of odd that this is the first time in nine years we don't have an LC Tiger team. Um, thus our move here to Ferris. Um, but, you know, again, I think we've got the four best two male, two female teams uh, in town uh, that are representing Spokane and representing the GSL here. Would you move it around as if you brought in a CV, move it out of CV? Is that how you, your thought process, or, <laughs> or do you like it at the same place? Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. And Stacy Ward, athletic director here at Ferris, has just been awesome to work with. Sure. And, and um, you know, she and her administration really jumped on board right away when I talked to them about coming here. But it, it, it's a little disconcerting for me to not be in my home gym. I, I got to tell you, yeah, I got to tell right. you, got to be honest. So. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, you know, there, there's there been some conversation about, yeah, moving it around to some different sites. Sure. And, uh, but maybe trying to keep it, you know. Consistent. Just, exactly. Yeah. And, and as close to the downtown area, to the resort where the out-of-town teams are, are staying yep. as, as possible. Next year's number 10, so I got my eye on a couple of. Spokane Arena for number 10, right? Uh, you know what? I, actually, Paul Kotzman, Mount Spokane Athletic Director, brought that up to me um, just about an hour ago. I don't know that we could justify with the, the crowds that we bring in. I don't know that we sure. could justify the arena. but uh... Tyler McClemmick call ties it up with the first and puts her team back on top with her 18th point. It's 52-51. You have we got a ball game. We have a great relationship with Spokane Sports Commission. That's so true. maybe someday we would be in their new facility. I think that would be a whole bunch of fun being downtown. Yeah. A, a real neutral site um, kind of a venue. And that's just across the river there from Rock Gonzaga yeah, right correct. now. Ellie Bonai. Jackson McClimmon call with a couple threes earlier. Off the hands of her twin sister and out of bounds turnover on the Titans. Had quite a turnout at the banquet last night. And uh, for those of you who might not be aware, the Fitz is now officially a part of Spokane Hoops and Hoop Fest, and uh, that association, I thought, uh, helped in terms of our attendance at the banquet last night. And we invite you to kind of keep that on your radar screen the Thursday before the event next year. Come out and join us. We have a lot of fun. That's going to be a great relationship for us, and, and I hope for them also that really is going to elevate a lot of things that we do um, with the tournament as a whole. Yeah. Peyton King the foul, and the Titans will get the basketball. Yeah, the Wildcats.
sorry, uh, but tried to run that uh, Arizona play again where they pinch at the free throw line. And in the pinch, part of it, they uh, caused a foul, and we're going the other direction here. Tyler McClimmick call. Pass deflected, steal by the Wildcats. Yeah, that's the length there again of uh, they, Claire. They, they have had their hands on a lot of balls tonight. They have. Wildcats struggling a little bit to get into the offense this time down. Ball's getting a little sticky. The overplay and the foul going to be whistled on Paige Jess. That's her first. We have 3.47 to go, and we have a one-point basketball game. The Titans of New High, 52. The Wildcats of St. Ignatius, 51. You're watching the Fitz on SWX. Mechanics Pride Tire and Automotive is a full-service, complete professional auto repair shop. We repair autos, trucks, vans, 4x4s, and SUVs, and provide a complimentary shuttle service to and from your home or office. We are a local business serving the Spokane area for over 27 years. We take pride in providing you with the best automotive and tire service available. We have three locations for your convenience, downtown, Spokane Valley, and on the South Hill. Mechanics Pride, our pride is your satisfaction. It's one-on-one, -on -one, it's in-depth, it's detailed information about the businesses that really make up our community. It's a good market. We actually are in full recovery. Walk us through the process. Learning and expanding your knowledge of what really drives us here in the Northwest. And how long have you guys been working on this? Strengthening the foundation of community. 7.30 in the morning on a Sunday, you're reading the paper, you're drinking a cup of coffee, and I want to give you knowledge. Breakfast for your brain. Wildcats of St. Ignatius from San Francisco out of the very powerful West Catholic Athletic League, the WCAL as it's known in the Bay Area, with their coach Mike McCarrens. There's the University of Titans with Jay Kennedy out of the Greater Spokane League. They're expected to be a big factor in the girls' race this year. Titans have a one-point lead right now with 3.47 left to go, and five timeouts left for Jay Kennedy and U High, four for Mike McCarrens and SI, and we will see some fouls and some timeouts down the stretch as these teams battle you for position. Use those timeouts, you can't save them up and use them no, later. That's right. <laughs> they don't let you carry them to next week. I said that about <laughs> fouls when I was playing, too. Good <laughs> Lord, why leave them in the book? Let's go. <laughs> Claire Entelin able to tie it up with the first free throw and a chance to give her team the lead if she can convert number two. A couple of swings in this game. Uhai had a 14-point lead at one oh, point, a seven-point lead another time for SI, and SI will retain possession. Yeah, it was a great inside move there by Wildcats to get, in, get the rebound. Jaylene G, G will hustle in for the Wildcats. Katie Christensen back now for Uhai. Trouble getting the ball in. Finally get it into the corner. Fresh off the bench. G can't convert the three, but there's Untelin. Rachel Harvey might have got away with her fifth foul right there going over the back to get the rebound. And she comes back and gets the basket to put her team up by two. There's that first time out used by SI. Yeah, just for a sub there so they could uh, not to uh, get a rest or anything, but I thought it was slow to develop that out-of-bounds play that uh, the Wildcats ran, but it was very effective. They, got, they didn't excellent, knock down the shot. Excellent execution. Yeah, yeah it was. They, they spread the floor well, set a back screen coming from the low post, and uh, then went and set an opposite screen and got the shot from the corner. It's pretty impressive, actually, when you consider how, A, early in the season yes. we are, and, B, this team from um, St. Ignatius graduated um, the San Francisco All-City Player of the yep. Year, and another girl who was also, I believe, first or second yep. team All-League. Um, so, you know, not not rebuilding here, kind of a reloading instead. Yeah. They... Tomorrow morning, 9.30. Excuse me, Greg. Great no, game number one here. SI girls will be a part of that. So four games tomorrow. Come on out and catch all the action. Should be a lot of fun here at Ferris High School. Doesn't cost you anything to get in. Just bring some non-perishable food. We collect food and money for... Second harvest. I've been looking at the boxes over there, and we're we're racking it up pretty nice. steady tonight. Yeah, I like it. Some of the Ferris student body filtering in. We got the band going on now. 
I think the population of the gym just doubled it, because it, of the, I, the Ferris cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> They've yeah. got a few. <laughs> McClemmick called 19th point. More girls in cheer costumes than basketball costumes. Yes. See if she can tie it up. Yep. It's her 20th point. She has 20. Her teammate Ellie bon Bona has 21. Well, it's a good time to do it. <laughs> Get that tie. Rachel Harvey. Almost a travel that time, but Molly Ennis able to keep the ball alive. Ma. So we near the three-minute mark. Nice pass. Yeah, that was. Sunja a finishes. Great He's job got eight. Draw the defense and to find the open player. And Sunja does a great job. She's got her hands yes. ready. She gets position. All she's got to do is just catch and elevate. She's ready for that pass. And, and I haven't seen her turn over one of those yet. Scramble for that ball. Possessions are precious, and you can see that. Yep. Foul was called on Ennis. So free throws coming for Tyler McClimmon call. Not who you want to put on the free throw line if you're SI at this point. No, you're exactly right. She's almost automatic there at the free throw line. Fans in Portland are going to enjoy watching the McClimmon call twins play for the Vikings. I'm drawing a blank, bud. Which one was the shooter last night at the, at the three point Tyler contest? Was. Was it Tyler? Yeah, just yeah. knocked down the free throws to tie it up. Those twins always do it to you. I know. <laughs> Call those U High games, those whole girls that can never uh, tell which one was which. <laughs> I thought Jay Kennedy, the, the U High coach, had a great line when he congratulated Tyson Degenhardt on winning the three point contest between the two winners. Tyson on the boys' side, Tyler on the girls' side. He said, hey, Tyson, that was good shooting, but I challenge you to shoot him in the shoes that Tyler was wearing. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they were not tennis shoes. No, they were not. <laughs> Tied up with two and a half minutes to go. Wildcats from San Francisco with the basketball. Titans from the Spokane Valley trying to play good defense. And they come away with the turnover at a foul in backcourt. Mike Mulcairn shaking his head, not happy with that exchange. As soon as picks up her fourth. So Harvey has four. Soon as has four for the Wildcats. Bonai has four. Caroline Edwards four for the Titans. Well, this charity stripe is really keeping you uh, high in this game here in the second half. They keep knocking down those free throws. Well, and for the Titans, it's been important because their two best free throw shooters are the ones that are getting the opportunities. Yes. Molly Ennis back in. As Peyton King heads to the bench. You see Jay Kennedy and Ray Schill and Lori Van Dies, the coaches for U High. Their team up two now, 58-56. As tournament director, though, I get a little concerned with all this fouling and foul shooting because it puts us further behind right. schedule. I, I, yes. <laughs> And the timeouts, those four and timeouts. And another one there, yeah. Timeouts. <laughs> Which That's SR right. has just called one. They're That's down okay. by two. Little seesaw battle going on now between these two teams, both of whom will be in action tomorrow. Again, the 9.30 action getting us underway tomorrow morning with the St. Ignatius girls. My father, who was an athletic director, would say, go cook more popcorn right now. Exactly. Let's go. Start selling more of that. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can hear your father saying <laughs> yeah, that. Let's actually. go. Make some more money. <laughs> <laughs> There's an opportunity in here somewhere. Good look at both benches. And the diagramming of plays that's going on in this early season because you just haven't had enough time on the practice court to diagram everything you want to do in specific end of game situations. You might have been able to do one option, but maybe not three or four. Yeah, and early in the season, I know I was guilty of it. Sometimes those late game situations, you didn't get to practice everything. Mm. And if you did, maybe it was just one or two reps. Um, and then you're on the bench kicking yourself. Yeah. Gosh, dang it, we should. I need to get that in. <laughs> we should have spent less time on zone offense. Right. Wildcat ball. They're down by two as we near the two-minute mark. Sabrina Ma had a huge third quarter. 
and a big game. And she tries a tough shot and can't get it to the rim. And here come the Titans the other way. Yeah, she was doubled up there and didn't really recognize it. A good defense by Yu High. Nice deflection by the Wildcats to get another opportunity. Yep, more hands in space, deflecting ball. That's good anticipation. Jeff, you talked about the turnover on this Wildcat team. Sabrina Ma, one of the sophomores who's seen a lot of action. Claire Untalin, another one of the sophomores. Harvey, one of the elder statesmen, and a beautiful move to the basket. Great scoop shot, yes. Tied at 58. Less than a minute and a half to play. Both teams are in dire need of a stop without a foul. Yeah, so Just I, like this one I right agree. here. This is going to and get up the possibly floor. play well for the Wildcats. Ennis on the drive. Back-to-back -back opportunities to get to the rim for the Wildcats, and they're up now, 60 to 58. A good job of spreading the floor that time to create that open lane. Under a minute to go. McClement call from the free throw line. She's hit a few of those. Yes, she has. Might have tweaked her ankle there just a little bit. And that was against pretty good defense, too. Yes, it was. It was really going to a weak hand, so yeah. it was a nice job. Yeah. She has her 24th point of the game. Her teammate, Ellie Bonai, has 24 as well. Tomorrow morning at 9.30, these SI girls against the Central Valley Bears. Game one earlier, Beaverton, a 62-54 win over CV. In the boys' game, 82-58, Mount Spokane over West Valley of Yakima. Mount Spokane will play the St. Ignatius boys in game two tomorrow at 11. And the Beaverton girls against these University Titans at one. And wrapping things up, West Valley of Yakima against Ferris at 2.30. Couple of Fitz disciples as the head coaches squaring off of that one, John Kinlock and Sean Mallon. Right. Quicker turnaround for the SI teams, um, you know, having to go earlier in the morning after playing the later games tonight. But we got to get them out of here and get them to the airport so they can get back to town. You know, we always want to work as much as we can with the out-of-town teams to accommodate their travel plans. You did a good job of making sure that those Wildcats versus the Wildcats <laughs> wasn't on TV. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Come on, Greg, you're never <laughs> wrong when that happens. There you go, yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> Possession arrows in favor of U High. Two timeouts left for the Wildcats of SI. Jay Kennedy still has four in his pocket. And we have 45 seconds left, and we're tied at 60, and it's the Titans on defense and the Wildcats on offense. Rachel Harvey over to the left wing. They've got a play set up for Sabrina Ma. Can't get her the ball up top. Harvey, the drive, nice dish. Sunja Elzi knocks it down. Boy, great touch there. I would have used the backboard, but nice, easy shot. Bonai, the drive, and the scoop answer. Boy, great shot to return. Yeah. 15 seconds left, and we are tied. Who do they go to? Better get going here. You got it seven. There's not going to be a timeout. Nope. The good hedge keeps Harvey away. One second. Untelin shot on the way. No good. I think it would have counted had it gone. We talked about getting behind schedule a little bit, gentlemen. We'll be more. This? That's all right. We better are. better get that, that popcorn machine yeah, turned one yeah. more time. That's, yep, right. that's okay. That's okay. Got great execution there in the last 10 seconds. Obviously, like we've talked about just a bit ago, something they had worked on, something they had practiced. They look like they keep it here. Yeah, and surprising because they have so many kids. I mean, they have played, especially have. Uh, the Wildcats have played about 10, 12 kids, it seems like. They have. And, and have everybody on the same page has been good. I think you're right there, Coach Hannon. That would have been better with glass, but it went in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was glass. That yeah. one was glass. All right. Yeah. Good decision by her, just straight to the rim before defense got set. Yep. So a couple clutch buckets. Both teams are in the bonus. Rachel Harvey playing with four fouls, as is Sunja Elzi for Mike Mulcairns and the SI Wildcats. I would be inclined to just start this uh, overtime 
in a different defense. I would come out in the zone. I would do something completely different that we haven't done this whole game just to throw a monkey wrench, make them think differently. Whichever team does that, that's how I would approach the start. Especially St. Ignatius because Uhi, like we said at the end of the third quarter, definitely has gotten into a rhythm now. Yes. They definitely are, are more confident and more comfortable in what they're doing. So I, I like your idea. Maybe that's a, a press of some kind that they haven't used, you know. Um, Switching up to a, a like you said a zone maybe that they haven't used yep, right. um, just just even if it's just for a couple of possessions It yep. doesn't have to be for the whole four minutes. No, right. That's what I mean Yeah, just yep. come out hit him with something different a different yep. look. Yes, and then hey if we get a bucket We're gonna go one two two press back to two three or something. Yeah, I, I used to like that some something a, a press of some kind Even if it's just three-quarter court doesn't have yeah. to be full Soften court. It just, up. Exactly yep. Tyler McClinic call buries the three to get us started in overtime, and she has 27. Yeah, the, and the only, only, only caveat I was going to say is you've got some D1 players who can knock That's down true. shots. <laughs> <laughs> a travel call on SI at the other end. Chance for Uhi to make it a two possession game. Four minutes of extra basketball. Bonai playing with four fouls. Played a long time with those four fouls. She drives and she's going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, seeing in the zone, you're not going to let her do that. Yeah, I was just going to say, we're going to uh, St. Ignatius is going to have to figure out a way to keep her in front. You can't help from the shooter in the no. corner. You can't. Have, you, the other side is too far away. So maybe give her just a little bit of extra gap. See if she. Uh, take a long tough two-pointer not a three-pointer but make her right. take a long tough two instead of getting to the rim like she has the last two possessions so Tyler McClellan call has 27 Bonai now has 27 the Fitz record for girls is Aspen Adams from Mount Spokane with 29 and Avina Westbrook from South Salem with 29 so we might see a record here tonight and it's a five-point advantage right now for you high Sunja Elzey gives it up to Rachel Harvey. Harvey to drive it. Elzey to pick up the rebound and put it back in. Yeah, it's good follow. Looked like Caroline Edwards might have got a piece of that one at first. That's Edwards with the ball at the high post. Osborne. McClemmon call turnaround. That's, Boy, she you is, just can't defend that. I don't know why they don't go to that more often. Yeah. She is really good on the block. A really sweet fadeaway jumper there uh, when she posts up. Yeah, tough to defend that. She just tied the tournament scoring record. And a whistle and a reach. And she just picked up a foul. And that's her third. Yeah, she just shuffles, shuffles to the block, yep. you know, and, and gives a big target and knows exactly what she's going to do when she catches it. Yep. And she's she's knocked down several of those little turnaround jumpers. Yeah, and it was all in rhythm. I mean, just yep. boom. Yeah, yep. it was beautiful. Untalin misses the first of two. See if she can convert number two with her team down five. Got that one to stay home. That's her tenth point. Yeah, a little squeaker. Ferris Jim starting to fill up with the Saxons getting ready to play the next game against the SI boys. Nice drive, Bonai, but the block by Untula. Wow. Big defensive play by the Wildcats. They needed it. Yeah, I agree. Now they need to convert. Oh, nice that pass. That is such great vision. Yes. Yeah, so that much. is such great vision. Two point game. You know, Untula's only a sophomore. I mean, she's long and. She's playing volleyball in college. The D1 coach is already courting her. And a steal, Harvey. She can tie it if she lays this in. She has eight, and we are tied. What a quick swing. Yeah, that was quick. Jeez. 147 to go. Jay Kennedy wants to talk things over. You mentioned being here earlier in the week, bud, when Ferris played, and what a Nice crowd they had, students and community in general, and uh, I think we're, we're starting to get the same kind of feel as things progress tonight. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting, and they're getting a little bonus basketball here and, and seeing some good basketball back and forth yeah, between what, uh, both these teams. 
SI was down 69-64, got a free throw to cut it to four. They get the block by Untalen, and then... She gets the block and the recovery. Yeah. Right. And the bucket. <laughs> That's right. Got to feed the workhorse on yeah, the defensive absolutely. end. You got to get both. <laughs> Yeah, just a that's just anticipation. A little bit lazy on the top pass. of the little yeah. top of the offense laziness there. I agree, but good anticipation and uh, tipping that pass and going the other way. Your your impressions of the Ferris boys who we got coming up here in a minute? They started very slow. You could tell it was their first game on Tuesday night, but then they really started to click and put some points on the board. They've got some very good young players, so I think it's going to be an interesting. Interesting uh, ball game because uh, we know what that St. Ignatius certainly has some talent. Mm -hmm. Minute 40 to go in the ball game. We're tied at 69. We're in overtime number one. The block, another one for the Wildcats. The nice pass and conversion by Alyssa Osborne. Looks like Harvey hit it out of bounds. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh, almost thought a U high kid knocked it out. Crew had a better picture of it than we did. He we, did. We yeah. were blocked out. <laughs> it was right in his uh, wheelhouse down there. And he's not arguing, so. Minute 15 to go. Two point advantage for U high. They have the ball. Two man game. Bonai can't convert it. She thought she should be going to the free throw line. Well, that was a good screen and slip and a good dish inside to Bonai, but uh, good help defense. Yeah, it was really good help defense. They switched it on yep. top, but the third uh, player on the opposite side came over and uh, got right there on the line of the basket and made a nice effort to help out there. Yeah. Well, we see in college now, in this situation, the shot clock would be reset to 20. Would, will we see that at the high school level eventually? Boy, I don't know. You know, that's a great question. Uh, I, I would say no. You know, we were talking earlier uh, before being on the air about maybe some changes in the high school game that we might like to see. I don't think that's one of them, though, that, that will will come for the high school. Yeah. The one I said I'd like to see is the half circle underneath the hoop. Yep. I think it makes it cleaner for the officials, the kids, offense, defense, everybody. Yep. Know where they're at. and what they got to do to take a charge or a block. Yeah. Bud and I were talking about the half-court inbounds uh, after a time, the NBA rule, the half-court inbounds after a timeout uh, might be something Moving that would, it up. Right, that might be something that would come well, to the high because school. Because you can do that in college now, maybe it makes sense to do that so the girls get adjusted to it yeah. if they're going to play at the next level. Yes. Yeah. Inbound Again, pass stolen away. Just a little lazy with that yeah, pass. Big lob pass. Nice pass. Boy, that was a great pocket pass. Jackie inside. Acosta off the dish. Two careless turnovers for you high here. Yeah. Under a minute to go, we're tied at 71. Bonai and McClement setting up for a little two-man game. 15 on the shot clock. Tough pass. Good catch. Step through. Going to the strike. Untalin's fourth, if that's on her. And it is. That pass. Right through three white jerseys. I know. Just fantastic. LZ comes back with that fourth foul. Tyler McClement called to the free throw line. If she makes this, she will have the Fitz scoring record. For a girls game. Every bit of iron and out. She's trying to get us on an odd number so we I, don't I, go we, into a double overtime. I was just going to say that. It doesn't get the roll though. It. Wow. <laughs> and a scramble and a timeout called by the Wildcats. Now, just like we were talking about, I, I, I would like to see that change where now we get the ball up here at half court for the inbound yes. instead of having to go way back to the baseline. I agree. 33.8 seconds remaining. You see the score tied at 71 as the Titans are unable to convert from the free throw line. Very surprising because Tyler McClendon called in a nice job at the stripe up to that point. 
early in the season. Maybe the legs taking a toll here in overtime. The other person that, that may take a toll on the officials, they got to yeah. go. Uh, and they're working the next game, I know, too. right. They got to go again here in a second. But they'll be nice and warmed up. <laughs> it's interesting to see. You see Jay Kennedy in the middle of the U High timeout diagram and play. On the other bench, at the SI bench, the head coach, Mike Mokarens, kind of steps back yeah, he's and, got and his, lets Bill, his assistant, kind of take over. He's got the assistant. I noticed that in the first half. I was sitting down there by their bench, and I noticed that, that uh, typically in timeouts, he steps aside. He'll talk about effort. He'll talk philosophical. But when it came to the dry erase board, he handed it over to the assistant. Yeah, and I know a lot of teams will do that. They'll have yeah. a defensive guy. Right. or not, A lot like college football or a football where... You have a specialist that runs a piece of it. Both those guys went to SI. Mike has been the head coach for 13 years. He's been on the staff for 21. And as we mentioned earlier, his brother is the athletic director. And I'd imagine the AD's pleased tonight, uh, Greg. He's not going to fire the coach. Yeah, well, that's tonight. what I'm saying. A lot of stress there. I could, <laughs> you know, we got Christmas coming up. You got to win. Any family win. tension. Right. You guys ask for a change in defense, and that's what the yep. Titans do. Yep. Go to the press. I see Ma taking a shot here, and if she can get freed up. They've been hawking her pretty well here in this About a five-second differential, game clock, shot clock. Harvey. The three doesn't go. Scramble for it, and they call a foul, I believe. We're going to have free throws at the other end. Wow. Interesting. We've got the Ferris fans rooting for St. Ignatius here, right. not, yeah. not for their yeah. not for their GSL rival. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. Soon We're John Elsey just fouled out with seven and a half seconds left. <laughs> Who's at the free throw line? <laughs> Alyssa Osborne. Looks like it. And she has not been to the stripe yet tonight. Talk about pressure. Well, Coach Norton. Director, you've done a great job of getting a couple good teams here for yeah, sure. Yeah, this is this has been a good one. This is what uh, you want. In and out. That's three straight misses by the Titans. With seven and a half seconds remaining, and anxious moments for the SI boys and the Ferris boys. Yeah. They've been they've been waiting for about 20 minutes. They've been up in yes. the upper gym, warming up, ready to go. They're ready to play. There they are waiting. Wildcats who were over and helped serve dinner at the Union Gospel Mission tonight. Nice. Always a highlight. Uh, you know, we're told over and over and over, bud, people that uh, teams, kids, coaches that, that come from out of town and, and do the volunteer experience in the afternoon, whether that's at the Ronald McDonald House or whether it's at the Union Gospel Mission, it, it is always referenced as a highlight for the whole weekend. Um, in fact, we were talking last night about how Students and coaches both will list off a number of things that they really appreciated about the tournament before they actually got to anything that had to do with basketball. Right. That's and that's good. exactly what we're trying to build, and I think that's exactly what Fitz would be super proud uh, of what we're doing here. So you guys are both coaches. During that timeout, how much time was spent just uh, chatting with Alyssa Osborne and telling her she's awesome and she's going to make this free throw? Uh, you know, I would do zero. Zero. Uh, I really? I would, zero we're going to talk about here's what we're doing on yes. a miss, here's what we're doing on a make. Yep. Seven and a half seconds is still a lot of time for both teams. Um, if she makes, what defense are we in? If she misses, what defense are we in? If we get a turnover, what are we going to do? If here's she, how many timeouts we have, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. If she makes, and she did, they call the timeout. I think they go with that press again just to force SI to use more time to get the ball up court. Yeah, and sometimes, though, I like that. Uh, it's not as helter-skelter. Well, at least when I was coaching, we'd had several home run type plays that we would put seven and a half seconds on, and, hey, we're running home run one or two, you know, whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And we had designed plays for that. Mm -hmm. SI had sat down, and you Hyde both sat down, but it's a 30-second timeout, so they're not allowed to sit, so they will all stand. The official's doing a good job getting them up, and here we go. And it, it looks like we're going to have maybe just a little bit of man-to-man -man pressure, yep. which I, I like that decision. Sometimes if you go with your 2-2-1 your or some kind of a zone press, you, you're you going to have to play in broken floor. And right. that, you know, that can be good for your team if that's what you're used to. And and that accentuates your talent. But sometimes that can be dangerous, too. Yeah, and I, I don't like pressure because you got too many people at the wrong end of the cup. Right. And 
there's nothing back here, and that's what you're protecting. So right. you get back screens, and all of a sudden yep. now you're stuck at the other end trying to get back, yep. where if you're back here, you're already defending. You're going you to yep. get set, and, you know, with seven and a half seconds to go, certainly that's more than enough time for St. Ignatius to execute something, yep. but they're going to have to spend a couple of those seconds getting across half court. I, I agree with you, Coach Hannon. I would prefer... Maybe we're just going to be loose man-to-man -man up here, full court. Right. But we're going to make sure we get set back here. Is in it a chess court. match, though? Because Absolutely. Well, Karen's calls the timeout after seeing what they're going to do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then Jay Kennedy makes a substitution. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but he's, Coach Kennedy looks like he's sticking with the same thing here. He's... You hide quickly out of the huddle while SI remains on their bench. Jay Kennedy asking Damon what he had for dinner before the game. Say, hey, I got, heard you got to work two games. I heard they have pizza in the hospitality room between games <laughs> if you're hungry. <laughs> right. I, I think Stacy Ward, I think she she told the officials that we got some pizza back there and uh, a lot of cold bottled water and uh, and fruit pies. Give a shout out to our, our friends at 7-Up uh, Dr. Pepper of Spokane, Frito-Lay of Spokane, Friends Bakery, donating products for the kids that we can put in their swag bags and in the hospitality room. Great sponsors of the Fitz. Here we go. Home run pass, and she's open. Harvey. That's She'll exactly go to the what I was saying. You know, That's that broken floor. Yep. No defenders coming yep. to the basketball. They're all going along with it. And, yeah, I yeah, I didn't like that defense. And Alyssa Osborne had just hit the free throw to put the Titans ahead a little worse for wear on that right knee. Nice pass. A yep. little uh, quarterback action there. There you there. go, yes. Very smart by the St. Ignatius coaching staff. Get your best get your best quarterback down there on the baseline throwing that one. Yep. Harvey has not been to the free throw line tonight. 5.4 seconds left. Her team down one. Here comes the pressure shot. I was wondering how close to 10 seconds she was. I saw Damon over there counting uh, on his hand, and I think he was getting pretty close to 10 seconds. Great look is for a second there, Rachel was on a little conversation with herself. Big rebound coming up here if this doesn't go in. Tied up. Back to an even number. Cue up that popcorn machine again, guys. <laughs> there it is. Let's go. <laughs> yes. It's a good thing Coach Kennedy had all those timeouts in his pocket. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he is expending them We're now. We're down to one each now. There you go. <laughs> if we do go to another overtime, they'll each have one additional that they will be handed out. I think the uh, chances of that are pretty high. Uh, getting a shot off is going to be pretty tough. Tied at 72. Or at least a good shot. Well, you've got you got three shooters that can space all parts of the floor yeah. here. You're going to have one on each side, I would imagine, and then one on top. Jackson McClement calls back in. She's hit a couple threes. Her sister can certainly score it. Now Bone I can score it. We're going to see St. Ignatius do the same thing. We're going to see them come up and pressure. And yeah. At least they, they got, got a couple bit, little bit looser, yeah. yes, definitely. Little like a little bit looser, a yeah. little looser. They're yeah. not challenging they're, the inbound pass. They're coming to the long this pass. This is a yeah. three-quarter court, little one-two-two. Okay. Yeah. Boni, four seconds left. Yeah, she, she got, she's got to kick that over to the left-hand side. Just yep. shoot her wide open. Yep. We're headed for double overtime. 72 apiece between SI and University. Excitement in the Ferris Gym. The Fitz on SWX. State Farm Agent Dave Christie is here to help protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Dave Christie and his team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. We're getting reports out of the control room that this winter season... In the weather, my advice is to get...
very fast. Snow is in the forecast and coming soon. <laughs> Kubota is Santa's favorite tractor. You can find your new Christmas Kubota at Coeur d'Alene, Boundary, or Adams Tractor. Your Kubota tractor dealers. Boys, I'll take all five Kubotas. <laughs> It's the Fitz. This is game three of the day, and it's in double overtime now between the Wildcats of St. Ignatius from San Francisco there in the red, the University Titans from Spokane Valley and the Greater Spokane League in the white. Eli Boni continued to play, or Ellie Boni, Boni, I should say, continued to play with four fouls. Caroline Edwards, four. Tyler McClellan call has four. Rachel Harvey has four for SI. Sunja Elzi is fouled out. Yeah, the Wildcats be, have the ball. Sorry, but that'll be a little bit of a factor here as we keep going on. Pass inside, Sabrina Ma step through. She's just been real consistent. All yeah. wow. just very good. Good footwork, good hit ball, no good court awareness. McClement call, tough shot. Ma got a piece of it. Yeah, that would have been her fifth foul, too, if she would have got that. Wildcats try to add to that lead. Don't get the roll on the three by Angie McAdams, who's been very quiet offensively. Boni the pass, and the foul beyond the pass. Acosta's third foul. Boni to the free throw line. She has 28 as she steps to the stripe. Man, she's had a nice nice night. Done a lot of things out here. Played with four fouls for a very long time and done a good job. That ties the record of scoring in a single game in the fits for a female player. And there's the new record with 30 points for Ellie Boni. That's a lot of points. 30 of the 74 for her team. We're tied at 74. Rachel Harvey has really done a good job directing the Wildcat offense in the second half, giving it up to Acosta. Sabrina Ma. Titans getting aggressive defensively. Wow. That's a tough call. Yeah, it'll be interesting who this goes if on. If it's on Tyler McClemmon call, she's fouled out. It is. Wow. And either one of those are two great players, so <laughs> huge. That looked like a, pretty much a loose ball. Uh, yeah, that one yeah. Could, uh, in double Let's overtime, that could yep. be... That could be just let play on. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Or Ma coming in yeah. back in, yeah, really. Yeah, actually, that, yeah. that could have been, have that called, been easily on 15. Yeah. yeah. Alyssa Osborne, who injured a knee, back in now. So that changes things for the Titans with McClellan call out of this game. It certainly does. Ma now has 26 points. Uh, Wow. Makes them both. Those are clutch. Yep. Drain them. Bonai. Three-pointer from the corner by Jackson. That, call. That's what I think she should have done earlier. Exactly. Yep. It was open on the other side, but exactly that's yeah. what she should have done. Well, and a couple times earlier in the game, she went over and just kept it, but I think the shooter was open down there. Definitely. You high by one, two and a half to go. Harvey, the spin, the scoop, earns the free throws. I was going to say, I think you got your odd number here, but uh, now I don't know that you're going to with the foul. Yeah, good dish, set her feet, nice, just good stroke. On Can't that help shot. off the shooter in the corner. Yet yeah, That drives me crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah, it does. Harvey made one of two her first visit to the stripe. one of the advantages and there are lots of them but one of the advantages of participating in any high quality preseason tournament but especially the fits is the preparation this is giving you high for the start of greater spokane league on tuesday well that's exactly what i said 
Yeah. And the second thing is, is if you're the away team, like St. Ignatius, you can come up here, no one's scouting you, mm -hmm. unless they happen to get some of this TV bit. I mean, mm -hmm. you can play tough games like this. No one knows how you did. You know how you did. Mm -hmm. Hey, we played a darn tough team. We can go back home and beat anybody, and they have no film of it. Hey, Beaver, the Beaverton girls are a perfect example. They came up here last year and went 0-2 and, and went home with their tail between their legs a little bit and then had a fabulous, you know, season. Yeah. Cause Lost in the semifinals of the state tournament. Right, the confidence. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of high school teams, they just play in their little circle. They don't yeah. get out and, and, and go and elsewhere. That's, that's <coughs> one of the things that I love about bringing in these teams from Oregon or from California, we've had teams from Colorado, is, you know, the opportunity to, to not just play your normal non-league games against your normal non-league opponents and, and mixing it up. And um, Did they get a timeout or is it a jump ball? I think it's a jump ball. It'll be U-high possession still if it is, and it is. Well, I think he wanted to time out. He, yeah, he was trying to get it. But yeah, well, that's what he was saying. See, Bonai, did you see what she did on the inbound? Tried to throw it off yeah. the defender's yeah, back, and it back, backfired yeah. on her? Missed, yeah. Uh, yeah, watch BYU do that in, in the tournament the other day. What's the Tyler, uh, not Tyler Haas, his brother, um, who had just a monster game. Turnover by the Titans. Oh, boy. And now giving it right back, Bonai. See if she takes advantage of a spread court. Floats it up and in. Uh, Danny Ainge was always good at that. 32 <laughs> for Bonai. One point lead, Titans. Minute 45 to go. Harvey, nice dish. This is where mentally you don't want to give up, you know. Right. It's, it's just not, you had not had good backside rotation on that play. Oh, they no. left that post open all night long. Bonai will be going to the strike. And I'm running out of room on my score sheet for her. She's got 32. <laughs> Peyton King's fourth foul. First is good. Ties it up. 33 for Ellie. Can she put her team ahead? It's the roll. Well, some of these players, if they showed up thinking, well, I might not get up much time tonight, <laughs> they're out of the court a lot. <laughs> but Harvey's so adept, just quicker than expected and gets by the defender to the rim. Yeah, I mean, she is running downhill. Then, yes. And Uhai's just not been able here in, in both of these two overtimes and even late in the fourth quarter. Nobody getting in front, nobody even making her turn at all. And right. she's, she gets ahead of steam and heads downhill, and she's going to the rim. Yep. Eliana Ramirez fouls out in this second overtime. So Harvey, who just converted a pair, will be back to the stripe. She's now made three in a row after missing her first one tonight. One of the senior leaders headed to Cal State Northridge. Has a dozen now, and we're tied at 81. Minute 25 to go. I don't think it's in the program, but I believe we, if we haven't already, we will soon break the all total points record of a girls game in its tournament play. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot of points. It is a lot of points. Wildcats wow. up one. Yeah. I don't believe we've had a double overtime game before, have we? Boys, but not girls. Okay. Yeah. Bone eye on the dribble. Good defense. Jackson McClement call. Caroline Edwards steps back. Gives Bone eye a little room to operate. Tough shot, and she got it. Yep. 36. Very, very good at the post. 58 seconds left. Peyton King just no match for her on the block. I would just, if no. I were Coach Kennedy, I'd come back to that again and again and again. Oh, look at that stutter step move by Harvey, and she'll go to the stripe. Yeah, I, I think you got to front that if you can uh, yeah, to make him lob it over. But so early in the season that, you know, you haven't coached any of those things really yet, you know, how you want to do that. But, yeah, she's going to just destroy her inside there every time. Harvey just made a pair. She's back at the stripe. That one off. 
That one looked tired. Yep, I agree with you. 49.8 remaining, needs this one to tie it up. Yeah, their practices probably haven't been this long. No, I, I was just going to say, they're, they're, none of these ladies are in the kind of conditioning that they will be in in a month. Right. Yeah, this is... She has 14, we're tied. Probably one possession each, yep. maybe two, depending on foul situations, but you don't want to foul here. Especially not the gal who has the ball in her hands. They're trying to double her to force it out of her hands. Timeout called by U High. That was a triple team in the corner there. It was. I thought the ball might have bounced on the line even out of bounds. But yeah, it's a question. We couldn't, didn't have much of an angle on it from here. No. But. So 31.4 left in the game. 12 on the shot clock. Tied up at 83. I know what I would do. There's the Saxons. I would put everybody up at the top Kobe of the Smith key is still or further Greg, I, out, and I would post up Bonnie right yeah. at, at alone at the block. Sorry to interrupt you, but yep. Kobe Smith was dancing about 15 minutes ago when we saw them waiting. He's he still, still dancing. Is. He's still yeah. dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stay loose. Stay loose. Gotta stay yeah. loose. Keep uh, the sweat. Put keep, the headphones in. Keep the sweat. <laughs> keep the sweat on. Yeah, uh, get it in however you get it in, whatever your sideline out of bounds is to get it in, and then run something where she's just going to enter it and shuffle. Just shuffle to the block, clear out the backside, don't let them help. I would run it from the start. I would put her at the block and pass it in straight. I'd put everybody else up here at the white yep. line. Get yep. out of there. Yep. Hey, just post up. We'll sure. le leave you on an island down there. Good luck defending that. And if it, it front her, we'll lob it over. No one's back there. Angie McAdams, Sabrina Ma, Jackie Acosta, Rachel Harvey, and Peyton King out there for the Wildcats. Jackson McClement call, Ashley Osborne, Carol Ann Edwards, Ellie Boni. But she's also your best and passer, so you want her to inbound. Right. <laughs> well, they ran her to the block, but they didn't get her to the ball. Nine though. on the shot clock. Osborne. Swing to the other side. Oh. Mills, high, Arker, back of the rim. Ma the rebound with 18 seconds left. Lots of time. To the rim, Ma. Missed oh, it. Unbelievable. Boy, again, Yuhai can't stop. And a foul in backcourt. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't know about that call. I, I just don't agree with that. Yeah, at that stage of the game. And it wasn't a foul. No. I just do not think that was a foul. I, I really think that's a, that's a poor call in my opinion. That was a foul, potentially right there. That ball hung on the rim. That's an offense. Yeah, you almost foul. could call the offense. That, there was she, more contact there than there was on the other. She didn't even touch her as she ran across. Yeah, that's an offense. Yeah. Jackson yeah. McClendon call the free throw, her first of the night. Yeah, that, that's, that just wasn't very good, I'm afraid. Mike Mulcairn's coming over and asking for an explanation on that foul. Yeah, I mean, I think he deserves one, really. But hey, you know, this has been a great game, regardless of the officiating. It, it's what you want. And they still are going to have a chance to tie or win. They're the going to get the too. ball back. Yeah, yeah. they're going to get yeah, the ball back for sure. And they're going to have an ample opportunity to execute something, whether they decide they want to go for the tie or whether they want to try to end it. Uh, will be a be a coaching decision in the huddle right now, but yeah, for sure. I just personally would like to see the kids make the decision of the game, especially what's in the backcourt. And I really just didn't think there was much to that. Y yeah, right. Saint Ignatius boys and Ferris waiting in the wings. Boys, well, SI girls have to turn around and play at 9:30 tomorrow morning. Here, it's gonna be a short night for them. Even shorter if they end up on the losing end of this game. Well, that's the beauty of youth, though. They'll be ready to go. Uh, I, the players will rebound quicker than the coaches, exactly. right? Yes. They play right. AAU tournaments all that, summer long, that's twice I, a day, yes, four right. times in five yeah. days. That They'll be fine. The biggest concern is going to be getting their uniforms washed in time by 9.30 tomorrow morning. Right. Missed. Eight seconds left. Wildcats. Most likely the final shot to try to win it. 
and I got a timeout. I'm not sure how soon the whistle. Mike Mulcairn's yeah, gonna... pointing, saying there should be more time on the clock. I think he's going to get a little bit, but not much. I'm guessing maybe a second more at the most. Yeah, the, the trail official was looking right at it, so yeah. they're, they're going to be right on top of this. <laughs> sure, these guys are loving double overtime since oh, they get to yeah. work the next game, too. Right. <laughs> Especially in a heated game, you know, where everybody's getting fired up. Yep. Oh, they're only going to add a tenth, 3.5. Yeah, that's, I, 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 I'm not surprised. I, I thought it would be less than a second. All right, you guys have gotten a good job coming up with what, what they're going to run. What, what are you seeing? Well, now, you know, at this point, he may be regretting that timeout, not getting more back on the clock. Now you're going to have to execute your sideline out of bounds, and you talk about things that yep. early in the season you don't practice much. No. That's probably one of them. And the last time they ran it, when they got it in, it was real slow to develop, and they don't have time for slowness now. they got to run it quick. Is there enough time to inbound it to Rachel Harvey and get her to drive? I, I personally would like to see Ma come off a couple screens before she gets the ball. So she can catch in in movement and maybe one dribble, two dribbles, and try and score. Or when she's coming to the ball where she's catching with her feet set and then just shooting. What you don't have time for is penetrate and pitch. No, right. you got to have that one person with the ball that's going to shoot Whoever the ball is getting inbounded to is it's probably going to be the shooter. Yeah, that's what I think, too. I agree with you, Jeff. Mike Mulcairn still talking about that call <laughs> under his basket a while back. Yeah. There's Sabrina Ma. But you got to move on. Very well could be a target. Jackson McClement called defending her. Here's the inbound by Harvey. So she won't be penetrating. Ma's going to shoot it from the free throw line at the rim. Titans have the rebound. And a whistle and a foul, it looks like, with point three left. Wow, some defensive indecision there by U High. And they got away with it. Yeah. The clock also did not run right away. The officials huddling to talk it over. They're yeah. going to call the foul on Peyton King. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't think that was. I think they started. Yeah, it may be clock operate the, the machine itself. I, they had a couple issues with it earlier. earlier. They're going to put 1.3 yeah. on the clock. Watch the little indecision by Bonai. Yeah. And there's the foul. Yeah, it, I mean, she caught the ball and took several steps. And she she could have just gone straight to the free throw line, squared up. She didn't need to hit the floater. No, right. I agree. It's Ellie Bonai, who has 36 points, a new Fitz record, yeah, that's who will be at the free throw line with 1.3 seconds remaining. Best she can do is give her team a three-point lead. SI would perhaps have a chance for a half-court shot to tie it. If she makes them both. Well, a great game nonetheless here. This has been outstanding. Gives her team a three-point lead. There's the shot from three-quarter, and it's short. And the Titans in double overtime. An 86-83 victory over St. Ignatius. Fantastic basketball game between these two teams. Absolutely. A Titans lot of feel good. great about a win, and Wildcats disappointed in a loss. Yeah, but, and you're right on both accounts. I think if you lost, but hey, you had a lot of kids do a lot of great things out here on both sides, of, uh, uh, or both teams. And uh, you got to go away with that for sure. And, and neither one of them have much time to celebrate, you know, or commiserate. No. Like you said, but they got to come back tomorrow morning and they got to get right back after it. Uh, and, and sometimes that's best, you know, when you play those kind of games like that. It's like get get right back on the court and play again. That's yep. why I like basketball so much more than football. Oh, it's yeah. play again. All <laughs> week long you're thinking about it. Yep. No, no, I totally agree. There you see the two head coaches. It looked like Jay Kennedy was kind of consoling Mike Mulcairns on the, yeah. the call late. And 
They're still having a conversation. Both of them talking about the great test it was for each of these teams. Time now to announce tonight's player of the game. Brought to you by your local Kubota dealers. Coeur Lane Tractor, Adams Tractor, and Boundary Tractor. And you're looking at her back right now. Ellie Boni. A Fitz record 38 points in this one. Leading her team to the 86-83 victory. She makes 10 of 25 from the floor. How about 15 of 17 wow. at the free throw line? Jeez, yeah, that's great. They've got her officially with 37 points. I had her with 38. She's also got 10 rebounds. So a double-double for our player of the game, Ellie Boni. And the Titans are 1-0. Oh. The Wildcats drop to 1-1. One one. Jeffrey, Greg, fantastic. Thanks, That's guys. Good. Thank yeah. you, bud. That was a good one. We hope the next one is equally entertaining, but not double overtime. Right. <laughs> I, know, I like it. I like them. They're good. You want good basketball. That's what yes, we have. We have been seeing good basketball. All right. We're going to step aside for just a moment. We will be back. And those Ferris Saxons cheerleaders will be cheering on their guys against St. Ignatius. New High wins it in double overtime, 86-83. You're watching the Fitz on SWX.